I'm uh, I'm from the UK originally. I live in Russia and I've been here for uh, about 23, 24 out of the last 30 years. Um, I grew up in the in the UK, went through the, uh, the the British comprehensive school system, which is a sort of it's a, it's a day prison for children. It has it had a few highlights. Uh, my my um, my primary school was excellent, actually, I have to say, and I'm really grateful that I went to a, a very small country primary school and there were just two teachers and two classes and pretty much everything I got from education that was of any use. Most of it I, I got there. Mm-hmm. Um, despite the fact uh, that I pretty much left school at 13 or decided I wasn't going to go back to it until I was ready. Um, I went to university when I was, I'd worked for quite a few years and then I went to university and studied Russian. I did Russian language and literature because I was just, I was interested in it. And then came out here and lived here. And I've lived, uh, you know, in quite a few places, but mainly here for most of the last 25, 30 years. The thing that I'm best known for, if you want to put it that way, is work that I've done uh, in a completely different area. I mean, I've, I've worked in my professional life in several areas. In I've got, you know, a language background. I've got a media background. Um, I worked for a Russian media company and so on. I have a public relations background for my sins um, and also a sort of technical startup uh, you know, like database and, and this technology company background. So I've worked in, in various different areas. Some of them, what you, you I suppose you'd think of as more sort of, um, you know, the um, um, creative and some of them more technical. So there's both of those. Um, but when I got to about 45, I, I just had this thing that I wanted to do and I knew that I had to do it. And I knew that if I didn't do it, I wouldn't do it. And, uh, I grew up, uh, I know that you have a religious background as, as well, and I came not so much from a religious family, but growing up in the UK, it's uh, it's it's Anglican, which is a sort of, Anglican church is, is a, a Catholic Protestant hybrid, I guess that's the easiest way to think of that. And uh, even as a young man, I was very, I was aware that, that uh, th- there wasn't going to be a technical solution to an essentially spiritual problem, and that was quite clear to me. I think by, by, by about 17 and I read the Bible ver, you know intensively for a couple of years and was connected with uh, a kind of a Christian movement in the UK and I, I don't hold anything against Christianity but but I could see the flaws in the essential uh, narrative and and the contradictions and um, I'm not saying that that I, I think that there, that there are parts of Christianity which are uh, completely admissible spiritual paths and I don't uh, it's not that I, I think you know it doesn't matter what you believe it does matter what you believe but it's true that, that it is possible to follow the Bible and lead a righteous life I, I can see that that's the case but um, I suppose the technical side of me couldn't help but see the contradictions and there seemed to be this idea that uh, being able to suspend disbelief was somehow uh, something that was should be to your credit like God needed you somehow to be able to kind of block out certain parts of your mind and I wasn't able to do that and so I withdrew from that sort of background but that that essential interest in scripture in prophecy in um, in, in the idea that God wouldn't leave mankind completely without some sort of guidance stayed with me um, I kind of put that on the back burner, did a degree, came to Russia, you know, had a life, got all kinds of things happened. You know, life happens as, as it does, no matter where you are. But um, about 10 years later, I began to read. The, this is what I'm I'm kind of known for. I began to read the Quran and I read it. I have a, my, my degrees in Russian language and literature. So I'm used to reading books and I'm used to reading them in a uh, in a critical way. And. I, I read the Quran in English in an English translation, and I I got a lot of answers for some very basic questions that I couldn't get from the Bible, and I got them very quickly. Um, the indivisibility of God, for example, and and some other things. But I was very impressed on the first reading of it, and just I, I'm I'm one of the people who's just addicted to learning, so I. I I just read everything that I could on this subject for over a couple of years. And I came to the conclusion that uh, that there are two narratives 
and I'd seen this in Christianity. So I'd, I'd already seen it before where you've got the scripture on the one hand and then you've got people, what people do on the other hand. And then there's a, what I would call the worship of religion as opposed to a worship of God, where the religion becomes the thing rather than, you know, God being the object of worship, as it were. So once you've been through it once, they're all the same. All cults are the same. I use that word in a very broad sense. I'm not talking Scientologists exactly, uh, because I would say we live in a cult. I would call this the the, the meta cult. Mm -hmm. And once you've been through one, you you start to notice that they've all got there isn't much new under the sun to sort of paraphrase Ecclesiastes. And so I I could see that when I then went and met mainstream Muslims and listened to what they said, I'd read this book really really well and very 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 uh, kind of you know carefully and I, I i'm not saying this is true of all muslims it's not but um w what i noticed was there was a sort of a reverence for the book as an as an item as a thing rather than actually listening to what it says within it um i mean we'll get into some of the details in that later if, you, if you're if you interested but that what i basically did and this is why why when I came across your work, I was interested in you as, you know, as, as, a, as a personality is because what I, th I think that you've, you, what we've done in different areas is in some ways quite similar uh, in the sense that we've gone back to previous knowledge in order to seek answers for a current, you know, problem as it were. And also the things that you've addressed and that you're best known for. And I know that you've got a range of interests and people would like to pigeonhole you, you know, you're the this guy or the, the that guy, but you know, actually we're multifaceted and you know, we both are, clearly are. But in the thing that you're most, you know, most well known for, and I'm sure we'll talk about later, I realized that, you know, what you've done is, is in essentially a, 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 it's iconoclastic. If you're going to go and tell people that, you know, what you came out and did, I, I recognized, we have an expression in Russian, a fisherman recognizes another fisherman to, uh, at a long distance. It doesn't really translate very well into English, but I could, I know what it takes. And so f what I did was essentially reverse engineer the Quran on the basis of objective data. And the objective data, I'm not talking about science, I'm talking about treating the Quranic data as a, as a, as a, as a complete data set. And, you know, if, we can, if you want to, I'm quite happy to, I can talk about this all day long, so I'll go over it quickly because I don't want to, you know, bore you with it. But essentially what I did was demonstrate to 1.6 billion Muslims or anybody who will listen that their understanding of this book is not correct, that there are two narratives. Now, I'm not the first person to point this out, but I, I would say that I'm the first person to demonstrate it uh, definitively on the basis of the book, which Muslims claim is their foundational scripture. And, and that's, a, a, you know, if you think you have hate mail, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can imagine, you know, what it's been like. But it's, I think what it is, is that, um, and what I recognized in the work that you've done, is that you, one chooses to take a stand or not, you know, in what's important to you in life. And uh, I, I've jotted it down here. The, 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 the saying which uh, reoccurs to me in my, in, in, in my thoughts is, and which really summarizes my life is uh, they tell you to think for yourself. They just don't like it when you do. And that that really, you know, sort of that's that's that says it all for me. And I, I wrote what I did was I studied. I mean, I have a background in Russian, which I speak fluently. And then I um, I studied classical Arabic because I, I knew without this, there's no way I can engage with this book. And so I learned classical Arabic. Classical Arabic is, is essentially a dead language. And Arabic, as people think about Arabic as being one language, it's not. It's much more like the differences between Italian and Spanish. There's a huge range. Somebody from Morocco is unlikely to be able to talk, you know, very clearly on a, on a wide range of day-to-day -day subjects with somebody from Iraq. It's just, it's a very, it's it's it's, it's a family of very close. It's one language, but it's it's much. It's not just like the differences between American English and and British English. It's far greater than that. So the classical Arabic is 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 the sort of the gold standard. And I, I learned it sufficiently to be able to read the Quran in Arabic with, with, with understanding and understanding the grammar and everything. And I mean, just long story short, I applied certain, what I did was I developed a new hermeneutic, a way of approaching this book, because, you know, if you don't know the way that, I mean, there's a broad church, but traditionally the way that it's done is people say, well, oh yes, well, there's this book, but then there's all this other stuff we have, to, we actually follow, mm. which is called the Hadith. And that's what people actually follow. In fact, they don't even actually follow that. And what they actually follow is a, 
um, an interpretation of that by their favorite mullah. And, and mm -hmm. you know, you have a religious background. This, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You'll be able to sort of correlate this to your own experiences. And I, I don't know if I'm autistic or what it is, but I don't I actually care about truth and it matters to me. It's not something that I can just think, you know, oh, yes, but this is real life and this is truth. It matters. And I, I suppose I've always had a, a very deep sense of my own createdness. And, you know, if you've had a couple of deaths in the family and, you know, you've been up close and personal, maybe in my case, become a father and you, you want to do what's, you know, you know, you want to you, you, you want to do. You, what they well, let's put it into sort of modern terms. Um, what you do in life echoes in eternity, as they, as he says in, in Gladiator, and that's that's that holds true for me. I feel that very. I've always felt that, and I still feel that. And um, I, I'm not against against atheists. I think when atheists tell me they don't believe in God, I think they're telling me the truth. I think they really don't. That's fine. Um, but that's your problem. You know, I, I'm not going to argue with them. I, I, I'm just made differently. It's like you know, I, I, I wouldn't accuse anybody of that for the same reason I wouldn't accuse them because they've got blue eyes instead of brown eyes. You're built with a certain sort of DNA kind of pre-installed. So that's the way I would see it. But just to move on from that, so basically what I did was I translated the entire Quran from 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 Arabic into English and annotated it exhaustively proving my points not because this is my opinion but on the basis because i've got a database background and technical background here's the data set here is you know what they're claiming this word means in 19 out of 20 cases but in this one case here it doesn't it doesn't hold true mm -hmm. and i got this from a, a brilliant uh, czech uh, linguist called bedrek Hrozny, who's given the unenviable job of um of translating the Hittite lang Hittite libraries from Hittite into English, a language which we had no understanding of whatsoever. Okay, and what he did was actually brilliant. And I, I read a lot of you know very disparate stuff, and I came across what he did. And what he did was he went through this entire library, and he um, he he worked out with this is at the turn of the 20th century, no computers or anything like that. What was the most oft recurring word? I mean, what kind of guy he had to be? And he, he reasoned that this was an agrarian society, so therefore this word must mean bread or grain or something like that, which it did. Which, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which served then as the Rosetta Stone, as it were, for his being able to unlock this entire library. I thought that's, that's, that's the key, or one of the keys at least. And so what I did was, um, I won't go over you know the details of the Arabic language but it's a very logical language and it works on roots and once you can work those roots out you can and I did I put the entire thing into an excel spreadsheet and basically worked out for each of these key words because we know what most of it means but what, what I saw was in the in the translations what they, what they do is they use a bait and switch and they say this word means it means prayer, 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 prayer. And by prayer, they mean something very specific. It's not just like, you know, it means something very specific, believe me, which I'm sure you know. But here it means something completely different. And here it means something different. And here it means something different. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Except that this book claims to be from God, claims that it's going to be preserved and claims that it's consistent. Well, that's not consistent. So what I did was I, I took something of Bidrick's kind of process and went through every single instance of these words and made them align and you can you can infer what words mean from context and you can show what they don't mean from context and if you do that 150,000 times then you can produce the work that I've produced and that's literally what I spent nine years doing that and so I was very fortunate. I started a YouTube channel, which is very small. It's got you know, 10,000 subscribers or something like that. I've, I've always worked on the basis of quality over quantity, and that's that's served me very well. And I've been very blessed in the, in the sense that mainly Muslims, mainly Western Muslims who could see maybe they didn't have the time or the, you know, the intellectual resources or whatever it was to do what I was doing, but they could see even in the early days that what I was doing was valuable. And I, I was supported, you know, five dollars here, ten dollars there, whatever, just enough to keep body and soul. Because I, I, I throw over my. If, if you, if you, if you come out and say to the, you know, the Islamic world, you don't understand the Quran, and here's why. 
uh, guess what? All your employment opportunities, they just, you know, they just disappear because if there's a choice between you, if there's a choice between <laughs> you and somebody who is not going to get, you know, a sort of uh, a, a parcel bomb delivered to your place of work, guess what? They're going to take the guy who isn't going to get the parcel bomb delivered to their place of work. It just That's just how the corporate world works, which is what I was in. But I wanted to say I've, I've, I know your work well and I came across you. I should think about eight years ago, you were recommended to me by a friend who was a school friend and he's a, he's not, he's not university educated or any of that. He's, he's a very bright guy and I respect him. And he, <clears throat> we, we met when I was in, in UK and he, he, he approached it quite, quite, you know, in quite a tactful way, but he started to send me some stuff and then, and then I came and some of your stuff and I read it, uh, obsessively actually for about three months because i think uh most people just go whoa you know that's that's the first response and i'd want to get into it but i wanted to ask you guy i haven't given you my sort of my background i know that for myself there was a point where in fact it was one day we were living in spain i won't give the details but we were living in spain we're living in a, pl in, in a place called gandia and when i said to my wife this is what i want to do the project that i've just told you about and we basically nailed our colors to the mast, you know, because if you're going to throw a hand grenade into the into the hornet's nest of the Islamic world, you better know what you're going to do. And I didn't know what the answers were at that point. I hadn't done the work. I just knew that I had to do this. This this if I was going to die, you know, tomorrow, um, I, I want to do my work. I want to I want to go at peace. And I can say that uh, although I, you know, I have many, you know, not so great points about myself, etc. I don't suffer from a midlife crisis because I've realized I've completed my duty. I know that I have. And if I were to, you know, God forbid, I was, you know, get cancer and die in three weeks time, I would be grateful. I'd be grateful that I'd had that, you know, that I'd managed to do it. And not everybody can, not everybody can. And if you can, I think you feel a sense of obligation. You know, you're fighting not just for yourself. You're representing as well the people who, who can't do those things. So what I wanted, well, what I wanted to ask you was, um, I mean, I've heard quite a few of your talks and so on, but was there a time when, like Emerson says, the, there is a, uh, there comes a time in every man's education where he must take himself for what he is, basically. What was it, what happened to you where you kind of thought, okay, I'm going to stand up and do this now? Was was there like an, an an initiating incident, you know, one big thing that happened or or was it in a collection of things? What What was it that happened with you? It was... You know, a time in my life around when I was like 24, 25, and I was, I found out about Michael Tessarian, Jordan Maxwell, David Icke, Alex Jones, and all these conspiracy figureheads talking about things that I had never heard of before. And I became obsessed with the information and delved into all their books, videos, documentary series, and everything. And, you know, a lot of it, there's a bunch of stuff I, that has fallen by the wayside. I read things like, um, I think his name is Val Valerian's Matrix series, all about all these alien species and things like that. So, I mean, I've delved down rabbit hole after rabbit hole and tried to use my own intuition and discernment to lead me to what makes sense to me and, and steering away from things that don't really make sense. And that's what's led me to certain conclusions and certain topics. Um, that I'm known for, um, but it, it began with just that, learning, you know, th like 9-11, the new world order, um, you know, some new, new age spiritual concepts and how they relate to some of the oldest religions, a um, bunch of, you know, astrotheology, these kind of things, and eventually, I, I it culminated, I guess, like I said, when I was like 24, 25, I, I'd been doing this kind of research for a year or so. And you start to feel like you're not a player in history and you're just a pawn on this chessboard when you're learning all this stuff. It's disempowering in a way because all you're doing is learning how, how disempowered, how little you are, <laughs> you know, how, how little a difference you make in history. If all you do is learn this knowledge and then sit back and, you know, seethe. And that's basically what I was doing. I was learning and learning. And the more I learned, the more pissed off and angry and sad and 
distraught I was. And at that point, you can't really talk to anybody about it because you're not you're not a good vehicle for expressing those those bits of information. I've just been listening to lectures and reading books of people who've been into the subject for 20 years. I'm getting my mind blown and I'd love to, to tell people and I tried <laughs> at that time. And all I did was, you know, turn my friends and family against me, you know, it was, it was still certain friends and certain families that I think, you know, they don't talk to me really. And this is why they just think I fell off the deep end. And, and, you know, if they could talk to me now, <laughs> maybe I would be more level headed about it um, sure. back then. But uh, you would just, just, you were just basically shouting at, at passing traffic. Right. It's, yeah. it's like you learn all this stuff and you want to shout it from the rooftops but you're not using the right language and and you're shouting. <laughs> People don't like that. <laughs> so um, I've learned over time to refine my technique in expressing some of these truths. Um, but because the, 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 water, the water hose method doesn't work. Nope. <laughs> it, it just doesn't. Um, but was, was, there a, was there a particular thing? I mean, because it's almost like a a swimming pool it fills up and it fills up and it fills up and that that was your filling up process and i've read many of the same sorts of books and alex jones and those sorts of people uh, another chap alan watt not the, yeah. those two he's the one without yeah, I like that one, the, the s and the no s i like them both the, yeah. yes this is, this is the no s alan watt and i and, and the, you acquire teachers and perhaps they you know they can help you with a bit of it or you realize oh actually no that's going nowhere or you know i realize you know i don't trust that one or whatever it is but you're kind of filtering all this thing into your swimming pool, but there comes a point where there's an overflow moment. Was there a particular overflow moment or was it just a sort of an underlying feeling of, you know, um, because not everyone feels like we do. They don't. They're the, and I, yeah, it, for me, it, that was a, a real, it took me a long time to understand this, that uh, and it's, it's difficult to stand out of your side of yourself and look at yourself and realize not everyone is built like this. I think there's only a very small, very small number of people who, uh, feel the duty to act and most people are spectators they're looking for somebody to follow they're essentially sheep and they were sheep in, in this system they'll be sheep in that system it this isn't a value judgment it's an observation they're different things and if you speak like this people tend to feel that you're you know you're a snob or you're this or that no it's not to do with that but a labrador is not a rottweiler they are different things and if you can't distinguish between them you know are, are, you try fighting both of them and see how you get on you know there's going to be a difference so many many people i would say the vast majority of people could have gone through what you'd gone through although they wouldn't have reacted to it in the same way mm. uh, it would have been a hobby or something mm. they could laugh about in the pub or whatever it is but for certain men and I think there are women too, but it tends to be men in my experience, at least. Uh, there's a certain type of man who uh, he feels a sense of duty. I can't put it in any other sense and mm -hmm. obligation. And I, I I, think that you and I are similar. I don't I, I don't imagine that you woke up one day and thought, hmm, yes, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to you know, invite all of this ridicule and and alienate all these people that I know because I've just got nothing better to do with my time. <laughs> It doesn't work that way. It's the, that we see the problem. I mean, mm -hmm. for myself, I didn't think, oh, yes, I'm going to, you know, explain to these people why they're also, you know, why they're also wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly thought somebody would have done the work that I'd done. And I looked. Right. And, and, and they, they really, really hadn't. And that's the mm -hmm. only reason that I undertook this. It wasn't through some sense of, you know, inflated idea about who I am. It was just, and I, and I went into it feeling really underqualified to be honest with you I, i'm not an arabic specialist i don't have this but i had just enough to piece this thing together mm. from other areas um so i had that sense of obligation and i think that you do too most people don't though and it, it's been a, a bit of a revelation for me to realize you have to understand you know, what where you are in the caste system and there is a mm. caste system whether we like it we don't like it it absolutely exists and i would say that most people's problem today is they're actually they don't know that and they're in the, they're trying to get into the wrong one you have mm. to resolve yourself about where you actually are you know mm -hmm. the, the 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 carpenters and the stonemasons were as proud of being carpenters and stonemasons as the king was about being a king or a priest about being a priest. It's, it's, there is, it's not an it's not an up and down hierarchy. It's it's being what you are. 
Mm-hmm. And what I recognize in you is that, you know, you, I feel that we're, we're similar in the sense that we have this kind of imprinted duty. And I think that it, it manifests itself, itself through the filling up phase, you know, the mm-hmm. filling up, reading all the books you've mentioned. And I'm sure there are many more and and seething. That was your word. And I absolutely completely understand that. I relate to it completely. But there comes to the point where you think, what are you going to do about it? And it's the call to action. And not everybody feels it. They, and you know, perhaps we'll get into it later. They really, really don't. And that's why I'm, I'm not in favour of, I don't, I, I don't try to wake people up or any of this stuff. I, I stick to small numbers of people because that's where the quality is. Um, but my question is, and I'm, I, I'm just personally interested, was there an overspill moment? You know, was yeah. there the thing, it can, sometimes it can be quite a small thing. Was, was there such a thing in your life where you thought, right, that's it. Now I'm done with all of that. I'm going to, I'm going to pick up the sword, as it were. Exactly. Was there, some, was there, was there such an, an event? It, before I started shouting from the rooftops, as I've told people before, I was literally shouting into my pillow <laughs> over and over again. It, it, as I said, I was seething and I got to the point that I didn't know what to, I, I think listening to Alex Jones and, and other things, I mean, he can he can bring that emotion out in people sure. for sure. But it wasn't just him. It, it, it was the culmination of my rose-colored glasses I'd worn my entire life being not just stepped on, but completely shattered and now having to be blind in this, this dark world. And that just really, I, I mean, yeah, I cried and screamed into my pillow for a long time and a few times, you know, it wasn't just once and I was done, you know, maybe a, a few week process of just like you said, the, the overspill, it got to this point when, and I was just like, ah, and I've just felt this weight on my shoulders because I know how few people in the world actually understood what I was coming to understand. Sure. And it's like, okay, now it's no longer just, I can't just have that knowledge in me yes. <laughs> because that's what I was doing. I was putting, putting in lots of negative, just all this yes. negative knowledge. Sure. And then it just starts overflowing, coming out into my pillow. And obviously that's not good. And so then I start trying to shout from the rooftops and turning people off there. And obviously that's not working. And so, but yeah, it was a sense of duty that came from this anger and frustration of everything I was learning. And then after finding ways not to express myself, started to calm down. I, I haven't done that scream into a pillow thing since then, honestly. So what happened is I, instead of just being a passive observer I became a player in history. You know, I started a blog. I started writing my first book. I started joining hundreds of forums at that time on online forums were the, the thing. You know, it didn't really we didn't have social media at that time so much. Um, I, I got on MySpace. We had MySpace at that time. I made something called Sheeple Revolt, and I just put <laughs> putting out just you know conspiracy information and stuff on there everywhere I could. I went on. Uh, Second Life, which was a virtual reality type thing, kind of like the metaverse, but 20, almost 20 years ago is when it came out. And I'd go on there shouting, they had a shout option, you got your little avatar, and you shout at people, things, so that they can hear you, and then they come over to you, and then you can actually have private talk discussions where you don't shout. So I'd shout things about the New World Order at 9-11 and fractional reserve banking to try and see if anyone else was interested in these things. and there'd be people walk over to you and they're like, what, you think nine, You think the government did 9-11 or whatever? And then you get to talk to them. So I, I started doing things like that. I went on something like 200 uh, forums and okay. I just started posting threads about conspiracy topics, things that I was learning and interacting with people about them. Um, so eventually I made my own blog. That, this was all before the blog. And then from there, um, I wrote the Atlantean Conspiracy book which was mostly an encyclopedia of all these, everything I was learning, all these other people's work that I was um, uh, learning, I was putting it together more for these blog posts and forum threads that I was making. And eventually it just became this huge encyclopedia to the point I wanted to publish it um, and did. And then I went back and published my first book that I wrote in college as well called Asbestos Head, which is a philosophical, funny kind of novella. 
And then from there, I, I, I kept going. You know, I made websites. Uh, you know, social media came around. I started making uh, uh, waves on social media. YouTube. I made a YouTube account. Started making videos. Um, wrote more books. I'm up to eight books now. Made uh, several, four, 450 or so videos at this point. Um, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of work, isn't it? It's it's and my full time job at this point. Um, and people I, don't understand that. And it took me a while to realize how little the vast majority of people will understand how much work it is. It's a job. It's a full time job. In fact, it's a job that you never it's it's actually it's like being self employed. You are self employed uh, in, in if you were to translate it into terms that most people can understand. If you're self-employed, you work far more than just an employee. You're, you're working pretty much all the time. My youngest brother is actually the easiest person. Uh, he and I disagree on lots of different subjects, but he's able to discuss an idea with which he doesn't agree, let's say. And, and so am I able to do that? And it's uh, he's more conservative leaning, if you want to put it that way. And it's much easier. What I notice with other people and people that I'm close to and love very much is especially, I'm not saying exclusively, but very often on the kind of left of, of things, um, is that they are pre-programmed into obedience. And I realized that um, it's not that they're actually left leftists. What it is, is that they are just obedient. Mm -hmm. And if they'd grown up in Ayatollah Khomeini's uh, Iran, they would be dyed in the wool Shia Muslims. If they'd grown mm -hmm. up in Mao Zedong's China, they would have been, you know, little red book carrying, you know, Chinaman. They are, this pigment in, in painting, I'm not a big painter, but there's pigment and then there's this stuff which carries the hue of pigment. Mm. And very few people are pigments. Most people mm. are just carriers of the hue. And if you think about it, if if society was full of people like us and there are other people be watching this who are of the same type, society wouldn't work. Now, it, it's, it's a wonderful skit. I don't know if you've ever seen it with Monty Python where they have their, all these philosophers are playing football. Have you, have you seen this? I've seen much Monty, Monty Python, but this isn't ringing a bell yet. It's worth looking it up. It's just worth looking it up. And and so you've you've got all these, you know, you've got Socrates and Plato and all these different, and they're all dressed up in their in their Greek togas, and um and and the referee blows the whistle, and then they they walk around and think. <laughs> <laughs> Should I kick the ball? What, what are what are the sort of philosophical ramifications? And they're walking up and down and pontificating in the peripatetic method, and you know this. And I watch this; it makes me laugh. Because I see something of myself in this, you know, mm. trying to work out the actual reasons. Now, if 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 all the tram drivers and the engineers and the you know the politicians or whoever it is, if they were all like that, society would break down. Society can only cope with a certain number, and it's a very small number of these. And you just it, this isn't this isn't about being arrogant or seeing oneself as special. It's acknowledging what you are. In the same way as a Labrador or a Rottweiler or a Pekingese, you are what you are within the caste system. You knew what you were. I know what I am. It took me a, quite a long time to work it out, I have to say, but I got there eventually. And I recognize it in you. I can see, okay, it's, it's you know, you, you can see it. And so it, you just have to own it. It's the, There's no way back. No one's going to understand you. Just forget about it. You know, you, you, it's the lonely journey. Just pick up your rucksack and, and get going. <laughs> That's it. That's how it works. Um, I just wanted to say briefly, on my name up there, it says, uh, I think that I can see looking here, I talk keys because I use this account for learning languages. So my surname isn't actually I talkie, it's Garen. So I, you know, if people are watching this and wondering, why does this chap have like a Chinese name or something? <laughs> I don't have a Chinese name. I just used this. My other account, I got, uh, I think, hacked and broken into and things that happened to it. And for some, it doesn't work very well. So I use this account for language learning. So, so that's, that's just the basis of that. Have you found any sort of, I was going to ask you, have you found any, um, you know, fellow travelers as it were in this of the because you're you're visible you know people know who you are have have you been able to piece together a group of people who so that you, it's easier not to you know spend so much time screaming into your pillow as it, as it were exactly yeah i mean that's one of the great things or, or for me my favorite thing of doing this work has been all the great people that contact me and the great messages they send the, th the ideas they send uh, quest, you know I've I've made a lot of new friends this way, and uh, yeah, it, I, I I say it's it's becoming like a full time job because it takes all my time. Sure. But I'm but all I do is sell books at the moment, 
and I can't afford to do just this. Sure. Um, so I, I teach yoga and I teach martial arts as well on the side. And between that, I've been able to survive, but I'm also not necessarily accruing the type of wealth that I would like to, uh, as I don't own a land or a house or anything like that. So um, I'm thinking of maybe finally after 15 or so years accepting donations and doing some kind of Patreon or something like oh, that. You should. you should, and yeah. you'd be surprised. There are many generous people, and I've been... I've been that's what... It's that's what it's come from. for for the longest time. I haven't done that because I have this thing where I feel, and people tell me that the truth should be for free. And oh yeah, you know, yeah, I've had that. Oh, yes, you get lots of those people. And yes. and people say that I'm a cult leader and that I only do this for the money. I get that all the time, and yeah. and I have this real feeling about. I'm sensitive to that, and and I also agree with it. A little part of me agrees with it. And so for the longest time, I haven't wanted to just have people donate it feels sure. like no that's i need to give them something so physical so, copies of, of books is, is what i've been selling and and yeah. so many people so have been just generous at, enough I'm, to to I'm, support me that way sure. but um to, uh going forward if i'm going to continue this work at the the rate that i have for so long um yeah. many generous people have asked can we donate to you can we sure. help you and i've had i've actually had to turn them down and uh, because I'm listening to these negative voices telling me that I don't deserve to get remuneration for my work because I talk about the truth, which is funny to me. It's like, so fiction writers or people that create fantasy or whatever, nobody bats an eye that they make money uh, on their fantasies and fictions. But if you happen to be someone who truly cares about the truth and wants to spread it like I do, you have to do that for free somehow. And uh, you, you, know, you have to have side jobs and everything like I've been doing the longest time just to to be the kind of person that I am and to be honest well, I mean, I'm, I'm getting tired of <laughs> and, course uh, of and course the, the generous people who have offered to help me um soon I, I am going to find a way um so that I can continue doing this full time without burning out trying to maintain other jobs on the side all the time and of course you know um so that that's my new struggle is just you know, I've been doing this now for like 15 years sure. and I don't, it's, it's, it's my job in the sense of it's my full time thing that I do all the time, but everyone else's job pays the bills. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, obviously it'd be such a, such a, such a better idea just to starve yourself to death and end up <laughs> living under, a, you'd end up as a, a pile of dust un, under a banana tree somewhere. I mean, that's obviously such a, uh, a superior Honor, method, honorable yeah superior yeah honorable living. I, we, I get that too i mean i i've produced seven hundred and fifty thousand words and th these are words you know for every word i've published i've written at least five or ten so you know you know i know what it is to write and a lot of this is very arduous analytical work incredibly boring people don't realize how boring hard work is quite a lot of the time um and you still and and I give everything away for free. Just download it. There you are. You here you are. And people, people, because I, I, again, I like like yourself. I tend to feel I'm dealing. This is if I'm if I'm correct. This is God's word. I have to give it for free, and I'm quite happy to do that. But uh, you find you'll never be able to please everybody. There'll always be the critics. I'm very choosy who I listen to now. I mean, I'll just tell you. Just you may be amused. In, I have an inbox in my in my email. I just have separate. Um, I don't know if I can call it up now, but I kind of know it off my heart. I've got folders, so I've got useless advice. I've got delusionals. <laughs> I've got <laughs> I've got death threats, um, <laughs> and I just put it in the appropriate box. If I feel like reading a few death threats, I'll, I'll open it up. <laughs> but right now, I'm kind of busy with other things. So. You're never going to please everybody. There will always be those people out there who are going to say, oh, yes, but yeah. And you think, well, what are you doing? Oh, actually nothing. The, mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's, there's an inverse relationship between the amount of advice that people give you about how you should be doing it and the amount of actual help that they provide you. I've noticed with people who have been kind enough to support my work, you can't get hold of them. Then they're not the people telling you that you should. Tra oh, you know what? You should translate your, you know, your life's work into Serbo-Croat by, you know, two thirty tomorrow afternoon. Have, <laughs> have you thought? Oh, literally, I've literally had this. I mean, I've literally had that 
particular thing? Or can you explain to me, you know, what the Quranic position is on getting married over Skype? Yeah, I mean, just I, I think there's a delusion. In fact, I need to sort of I need crossover boxes between delusional, mad, uh, insane, works for Mossad. You know, whoever, mm. whatever. Just, just what I, what I need to do is to automate this so that just go straight to those ones because the people who actually support you, who understand what you're doing. This one talking about small numbers. You're dealing with a great big data set. I'm dealing with a much smaller data set. But I would, um, I don't know, but I would imagine that the quality people who are going to understand the value of your work is going to be a, a much, much smaller than the the idea tourists and and some people they just don't know yet they you know I'm not saying everybody's terrible they're just making up their minds maybe they'll come mm -hmm. to you come back to you in six months you know, mm -hmm. people if they find their level it takes time but don't be afraid to let people help you do what you do because not everybody can do it they don't have the time they don't have the resources they don't have the background but they do appreciate what you do and so you have to in fact you could argue that it's actually a bit selfish of you not to allow them the opportunity to participate in what you're doing because you're not just doing it for yourself you're doing you're a representative of a whole load of other people who appreciate what you're doing so that, that would be the way that i would argue now of course those sorts of people exist and it's easy for your you know because I, I get people well you i should print these books and send them out for free as well you know you literally get i've had yeah, you have to lose money yeah <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I've had people on YouTube making Sam Gerens is in it for the money. Or something. Oh, yeah, I gave up a corporate job to to, to throw a hand grenade in the, in the hornet's nest. You've done it, right? Now, there's a, there's a career move. <laughs> you, know, exactly. you can't please these people. Don't try. Just, I, I mean, I know it's difficult, and I find it difficult. My wife really helps kind of keep me centered mm. on that one. Because, you, you know, especially somebody, I would say, like you, you're an empathetic person by nature. You wouldn't be doing what you're doing if you weren't. And so you tend to run everything th right the way through the middle of your nervous system. It'll kill you. I'll tell you now, it will kill you. If you don't stop it, it will kill you because you, your, your nervous system, my nervous system, we're not, it's, you're not built that way. You can't do it. And the kind of people who, who, are, who are so free with their life-destroying advice, <laughs> they don't have that. They're yeah. not like you. It's, it's, it's a real mistake. And I did this for years to transpose what I am onto other people. They're different. They're different cast. They don't care. They, their nervous system, you could, you could run battery acid through it and nothing mm. would happen. No. <laughs> for you, it's completely different. And you just have to, I mean, I'm saying you, one has to, I had to learn to abstract abstractualize it and almost put it into the third person i mean things like you know hates and all you know which you know, we, we get i had a, a an epiphany with that it <laughs> just one thing happened and i was watching it was actually a live stream you know you see these live streams where it like a hundred thousand people are watching it or something and all of these comments were flying up the right hand side <laughs> like that i thought that's what i've got just in slow motion <laughs> <laughs> and once I saw that, I, it just cured me. I was just cured from then on for all, all the kind of hate stuff that you get. You ha mm. I, I, we're living through a new phenomenon, and I think that there are some mental tricks that you have to one has to learn to play with oneself in order to to stand it. But mm. you do, you know, the f people want to help you in your work. You, you need a simple, understandable way for people to do that, mm. and um, everybody else, who cares what they think? I remember uh, Elvis Presley. I mean, Elvis Presley. Who could dislike Elvis Presley? Elvis Presley said, "Not everyone's going to like you." He said, "Not everybody's going to like me." I mean, this is Elvis Presley. If Elvis Presley, if you, if not everybody <laughs> likes Elvis Presley, what chance are people? Like? We, we don't. We have no chance. You know what I mean? We can't sing like he does. We perhaps we don't look yeah. like he does. It's just it, there's no winning. So Elvis Presley had haters too. Mm. Can't yeah. please all the people, and you shouldn't even try. And if you do try. You wouldn't be doing your job. Your job is to, to, to be true to yourself, to, to be true to the message. If you find, you know, you wake up one day, you've lost your mojo, you've got nothing left to say, which is not what happened to me, but I did finish a project. I said, I finished this now. If you supported me on the basis of this, you should stop now because mm -hmm. I'm now moving on to something else. And guess what? I'd say two thirds of the people who supported me regularly up to that point carried on mm -hmm. because they appreciate what I do. Mm -hmm. And Give them the opportunity. This isn't, um, you know, it sounds a bit like a sort of Dale Carnegie moment or something, but but you should because they want to help. I mean, can you imagine people working in a factory or in, you know, working Starbucks or some job that they hate, but 
they can come and see somebody who's taken the time to do the work that you've done. If you if you allow them to participate in in that, you know, they have a reward too. It's mm. it's actually, I'd argue, it's a form of it's slightly maybe not exactly selfishness, but not that far from it, that kind of perfectionism of wanting to do it all oneself. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I had to learn to let that go. And uh, and and I've had people help me without whose without whose finance, I'm, I mean, actual help, because uh, people can't actually understand there's a difference between morally supporting and con consuming somebody's content and actually helping them, which is, they, they, they conflate those two ideas, but some people don't. And, you know, you should, I think you should let those people do that and make it simple. And don't be embarrassed. Mm. I mean, you know, all kinds of people are allowing other people to help, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no, thanks. For that. I, I do think, like I said, there's a part of my brain that agrees with those negative comments saying how the truth should be free. And then, you know, I agree in some sense that at least, um, you know, I've always put out an article form, audiobook form, in some form, everything I've done is available sure. for those who can't afford it. And that's the sure. part I agree with. But the other part, which I think I do have that limiting belief as far as money is concerned, is that, yeah, maybe I don't feel like, um, as, you know what it is? It's, it's, I, I'm like a kid of the 90s, and the word selling out, it, the, the whole concept of selling out was a real thing. And like I, I still like cling to that. But now in like the 2020s, like... Yes. Every YouTube video, you know, in the middle of it, they, they stop to be like, do you need, do your balls get, get particularly hairy? Do you need to be, man, do you need to be manscaped? And like, and then they go back to talking about some philosophical subject. And, and these people don't have any qualms about whoring themselves out, selling out to that degree. Meanwhile, Eric, I don't, Eric, I don't Eric, even want to put ads on my videos because I don't, I don't want to, I feel like, like I'm selling out to put ads on the videos. So, this, so I definitely have this limiting belief about money and I and the perfectionist thing you're talking about. It's like I yeah. want to to be perfect. Yeah, I'm, de I'm a Virgo. I definitely have that. Yeah. But yeah. I need to stop because, like I said, you I, do need to I stop. feel Eric, that Eric, over time Eric, it's yeah. it's getting to be difficult to be to do the, the kind of work that I'm doing of and course. then also try to find money in another way. Of course, you know I mean? no. You know, and I was just going to say, you're not a punk rock band. You know, <laughs> yeah, good point. I should stop <laughs> taking my advice from the music I listen to. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine, and 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 people want to. I think people want to help if you give them the opportunity. You're not forcing anybody. You give all of your work away for free. I give all of my work away for free. More than that, and like you, I've. You know, I've read out, you know, I read the entire Quran in English onto audio, put it up on my site so that people can download it, put it on their phones. If they want, they can they can they can download my books and print them onto paper. In fact, I so if that's the only way you can do it, I suggest you do do it because the internet can go down. You if you want a copy of it, take it. You can only do what you can do. That's as much as you can do. It's just, it's a you know, it's a lot. And there are people out there for whom they're they're time poor, but they're they're money rich. Allow them to help you a bit if if they want to, and uh, and and then they can. I mean, I'm, I, this isn't a prosperity gospel or anything, but they can <laughs> they can participate in what they by that means in something that they can't do for whatever reason. And you know, don't allow them the opportunity at the very least. It's there's nothing wrong with it, and uh, you need to eat. You need somewhere to live. And, you know, you're, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 40. 40. You know, you, you need, to, you know, there are things, you know, 50 will be on you. I'm, I'm 55. I was 40 10 and a half minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> it goes quickly. And, you know, you have, you know, there are certain things you have to put in place. And those things, we live in a material world. See, if you, it's a full-time job. And, and, and you know, that, that's fine. So I, anyway, I mean, I don't want to, you know, make it into more than it is. Than it is. All I did was offer the, pe the people the opportunity to donate if they wish. That's all I've ever said. If you and I said it at the end of my videos, I don't, you know, there's no hard sell or anything like that. But over, the, you know, I, I said if you'd like to help me, there's a link down below. That's it. If you'd like to help me, that's that's hardly putting a gun to somebody's head. It's saying if you'd like to help me, then there's a you can donate down below. And guess mm. what? Probably about. 0.01% of the people who have taken my work and 
for free or whatever have done that and i'm very grateful and if and it, in fact i dedicated my book to the, these people because had they not done that i wouldn't have been able to do this work it's as simple as that simple as that uh, i think it's the attempt to lead the perfectly edited life can actually stunt a lot of spontaneity and and other enjoyments i i have like you i kind of have both i think there is a great satisfaction to uh building a body of work as you see especially we're talking about how hard this is, you know, putting the hours in. I mean, Beethoven was at his desk nine o'clock every morning. I'm not taking away from the fact he had talent, but he, mm. he did. He put the hours in and it's the hours if you Thanks produce, both. if you if you need both. It's, but, mm. uh, you know, genius without discipline is, 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 is not enough. You know, even if one is possessed of genius, it's it's the people who do the, the hard work. I think it was Woody Allen who said 80 percent of success is just showing up. Mm. and uh, there's a lot of truth to that just just yeah. being the guy who's who's there on time does the work you know that sort of thing um going back to Elvis Presley he was he had a really really uh, strong work ethic he was you know even though he was the biggest star in the world at that time if it was nine o'clock he was there at nine o'clock he was he was there he was prepared he'd done he'd learned his lines or if he was an acting job whatever it was and that was just just how he did his life and uh it's how I do my life I just I just put the hours in and I know that you do because I've seen what you produce. I know how long it takes. And I think a lot of people don't understand how long it takes mm. to write, to record. Even when you record something, even though you wrote it yourself, you can get a kind of snow blindness to, to reading something that you wrote yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to it through, you'll find, you know, and it's very hard to drop in you know, uh, audio that doesn't sound, if you record it at a different yeah, date, right. when, the, yep. when the, you know, the air pressure is different. I know it sounds very precious, but it actually sounds different. And everybody mm -hmm. can hear it. You can hear yep. it when it's been, we've been cutting. And, you know, you aim, it's just, it's just you, you and a, Adobe Premiere or whatever it is that you're using and, you know, your time and your hours and all of that. But when you do ship, if you want to use that word, you know, you punt it out there. And you can see that body of work. I mean, if I just take my, you know, my books, um, you know, look at it. You know, I wrote, mm -hmm. you know, this lot. And yeah. you, you look at it, you know, that's 10 years of my life that I put right. into that. And I know that you, the reason I'm saying this, I, I know that you know that feeling. And uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a sense of achievement. And also, right. you know, you can see that your life is here it is. Here's what there's been some output. I've been. It wasn't just screaming at passing cars mm -hmm. under the underpass. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just because I went through a similar phase of alienating people because I, I didn't have the tools to articulate mm -hmm. this. You know, I, I know that, that that the polished erudite person you see before me, you before you now, it wasn't all this way. Always this way. You know, like, I, like, likewise. I, likewise. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, <laughs> I, I I scrambled my way up you know, through the, the brambles, getting cuts and bruises and bashes along the way, especially going through the British education system, you know, which is basically a kind of formalized brutality to destroy any interest in learning. Um, so, you know, I, I, I understand that. But going back to the writing thing, when you produce something, you've finally done it. And each, you know, you look at you know, what you've written and only you know how much you actually wrote. Because mm. writing is editing. Writing is writing and cutting and cutting and editing getting there nah, that's too much now nah, you know blah 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 that process people think you just sit down tap 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 and th there you are see mm -hmm. i've just written here war and peace finished <laughs> see it, it doesn't doesn't work that way it's it's as as you know but it's that sense of achievement and i i, I don't know i i feel that too and i feel it about videos as well i mean not it's not obviously quite the same same way but i don't make what you make i don't make those i make long and boring videos you make really interesting videos i mean you're interested you know they're they're visual and they're they're very well read, written and well read and i think you've got a very good cadence like the the, the way that you read it's it's it, you're easy to listen to and on a subject which is intrinsically difficult i mean difficult in the sense that well i mean if you're going to get into it into it it is difficult you actually have to study but to, as that sort of what you've got like these bootstraps into it these are uh you're aiming from a lot of the stuff that i've listened to to people who are intelligent enough to listen to what you're listening to intelligent enough to do the research if they choose to do it and are able to follow this to kind of draw give them a starter just like a bootstrap up into the first sort of echelons of it i think you did a phenomenal job it's uh it's, it's really good and uh 
and you know, the value of it it must be rewarding i mean you you, you get you get you get a reward from that right i mean that emotionally must, sure that, okay. it's that that pride and and that the, those good feelings that you get from the accomplishment and from changing people's minds and people coming around to to your ideas yeah. that alleviates that uh, seething anger that I talked about earlier and it's replaced with a feeling of hopefulness for the future and for what you're doing and that's what I would hope that everyone else um, will strive towards as you realize you know as everyone else's rose-colored glasses fall off and become shattered this is the way to go you know it the way to go isn't to just try and pick up the pieces on the floor and woe is me no, the way to go is to say, all right, those were faults. <laughs> now I'm seeing reality. Now let's deal with it. And, and and everyone has their own way and their own creative process that they can actually deal with reality once they figure it out. Um, I feel my process is like you said, or my mission uh, is throwing those rose colored glasses off. That's the most important step for me. So I, I like to reach new people. So a lot of my videos are purposely the way that I make them. I, I think that I'm talking to somebody that hasn't ever, ever come across this before. Those are the people that I most want to reach because if you're if you're already in this and you get it, well, you, yes. you're going to be consuming more of this information. You're going to keep going, basically. It's like a snowball. But if you're just at the top of the mountain, a little snow pebble or whatever, somebody needs to kick you, push you off that mountain so you can start the journey. And that's what I've want to do is push everybody <laughs> to start their own truth journeys so that but I, it's interesting i wonder if is that even possible because like we're talking about the, the whole cast type system yeah, I, 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 it's I was, like I, I'm, I'm tr it's like i'm trying to do something that yeah, is literally impossible because of the way that pe people are wired we're not all the same so oh, not no. all the little pebbles are going to roll down the mountain there's oh. many that oh. will make up the, the peak and they will yes. stay there forever thinking that they know everything, even though yep. they've never even started their journey down the hill. Sure. sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I, I, was, I was, as you were saying that, I was considering whether kind of pushing back on this. Um, I think there is, a, I'm going to sort of lay something out and you feel free to attack it. Okay, that's I'm absolutely fine. But this, this is where I've come to with it. Clearly, there is a ruling elite. There's, it's delusional to think that there isn't. Why wouldn't there mm -hmm. be one? Mm -hmm. um, every mountain has, has a peak. Every iceberg has a you know, has a peak. It's just obvious. Um, my view is I'm I have no problem with there being a ruling elite. That that has to be one mm -hmm. uh, because of the nature of power. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've worked in anyone who's worked in a big organisation knows that this is true. You may have a kind of a, a dialogue which is weaves into the waft and web this idea of democracy and choice but we all know that this is pants we just mm -hmm. do there's, there's an agenda in any organization and your job is to get with that agenda if you want to get ahead that's mm -hmm. why we have such mediocrities you know all over the the west you can't really point to anybody who's even a statesman of any kind they're mediocre they are midwit mediocre people i'm not saying this to judge them or to be horrible it's just a fact the idea is from the real elites who gave us this idea of democracy? Democracy is really just a way of flattering lots mm. of people. Their opinion mm -hmm. counts. Their opinion doesn't count, not at all. Mm. There's one agenda. It's been pushed through all of my life, my grandparents' life. You know, it, there is one agenda. I'm not saying it doesn't go off the rails here and there, but basically within within certain kind of um, tolerances, it stays on the same sort of trajectory. I've been up quite close and personal with aspects of it just through parts of my working life, just through people, just through life meeting you know, very rich people being you know around those sorts of people and so on i'm not saying that i was in with them or anything like that no but i i worked with some very very wealthy clients i've been you know just i've just lived long enough to meet you know enough people yeah. um so we agree that there is 0.0001 percent or whatever it is of people that that are making policy and that policy is rolled out through corporations, it's rolled out through military, it's rolled out through education, entertainment, music industry, whatever it is. OK, whatever the mechanics of it is, you know, we, we can sort of you know, discuss that, but that exists. They've given us democracy, which is the ancients would have thought was a, a ludicrous idea. In fact, they wouldn't have understood it. It would have seemed so self-evidently stupid they wouldn't have understood how you, any intelligent person could 
you can talk about it really. Okay, we have that. What I see is the recurrent theme is that all solutions from intelligent people, many of whom I respect greatly, even though I may disagree with them on you know, quite a lot of details, it always boils down to the same basic paradigm, which is it, it's articulated differently, but it's always the same thing. It's when enough people wake up. And it's a, and my argument would be, who gave us this paradigm? Mm, mm. A paradigm which is intrinsically flawed, just like the idea of democracy. I'm not interested myself. It sounds I'm accused of being a snob or you know, whatever it is. It's not that. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's not a, it's not a matter of being a snob say a, a, a rottweiler is not like a pekingese they are different types of dog they have different types of functions that's not being a you know an ist or an ite or an ob or something it's just having being able to look at things and see that to make to make a differentiation between what things actually are so that's that'd be the first part of it the second part of it is this sort of the theology of when of, of you know when enough people wake up ism is uh, the idea that, that 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 these sort of people can then kind of then replace the ruling elites or mm, we're all going mm -hmm. to live you know in this sort of um, utopia. I I I I put it to you, Your Honour, that if the price of saving the world which so many people claim that they're really interested in. It's, 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 it's the new woke, it's the new woke, this thing. If the actual price were to give up their iPhones, <laughs> they wouldn't do it. <laughs> they wouldn't. It doesn't matter what they say, words are meaningless. And that, that's why what I recognized in you is that, you know, it's actions. And that's what I've done in my own life, and it's actions. But you, you, you're, you know, you, you you're unlikely to meet five more people like you. You just have to accept that. It isn't about, it's just a fact. It's like, you know, people who red hair and, you know, green eyes and, you know, there's just certain genetic combinations that, that just don't happen very often. There you are. That's why you feel so weird because you, because mm. you are, mm. you know, that, that's, it's just, you have to just, to, just have to acknowledge it and just kind of work with this you know, reality. Mm -hmm. um, I've, 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 I've referenced Elvis Presley a couple of times in this, and then the reason why I do it is because Elvis Presley said, you know, quite a few things that uh, he's actually, I think, underrated as uh, as a leader and many other things. He was a very interesting character, leaving aside, mm -hmm. you know, the good looks and, you know, he got fat later in age and all the rest of it. He was, a, he was a very intelligent man in a certain type of way, Elvis Presley. One of the things that was very interesting about him that I've always found fascinating about, about Elvis Presley is that he came from nothing. And if you look at his family, you know, you know, they're from the deep south, you know, the mm. <laughs> his, his family is like the, it's like the monsters. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating. And then you have this Adonis like young man with this fabulous voice. And I recognized in some things that he said he he just felt, why me? Mm. He went through his life with this, why me? Yeah, why and you know, and it's a fair question. Why you? Mm. You know, when you when you look at what he where he came from and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. And uh, I think there's just a point at which if you are unusual in this way, you just have to accept it. It's, that's part of the mission. And mm -hmm. it's the only it's a part that nobody can understand but you, no one can help you with but you. That's all it is. You have to so, accept it. I I feel like I'm agreeing with the point you're because I've been coming around to this more and more that it seems that exactly the point is like one you're not going to wake everybody up and then two the, what do you expect to happen if everybody did wake up exactly the, the, so rather than that main, continuing to be my subconscious focus what do you think is a better focus at this point where it seems like most of the people who are going to wake up to these things have done so do we need now to make some sort of more formal groupings and m mission statements and action plans that take, you know, groups of, is that what the next thing is? What is the next thing if it's not trying to wake everybody up so that we all get on board on the same kind of concepts, we all agree on these basic truths, like that there is a ruling elite that is 
slowly taking us to, in the absolute opposite direction that 99.9% .9 of humanity would like to go. But it works well for the 001, you know, so that's where we're going to go. What, what would you say then would be a good way for people like us to spend our time that have come to this realization, have come to this place of, of influence even, but then it's like we can't reach those people. And even if we did, they're not going to be that helpful in the mission. So what, where should our focus be if not those yet uh, you know, unawakened people? And what, okay. and, what sh and what should we be doing with the awakened people? How should we be, if, and if not coming together, then what? what and, and if we do come together, then what? Like, uh, okay. these are all great questions that I don't have very good answers to, and I'm wondering if maybe you have some. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I learned. Okay, yep. and it's, this, this, this isn't implicit language, and in knowledge is just from what I learned from reading the Quran, that there is this, this other path, there's this, it's, it's a recipe book, just like making Victoria sponge cake. It's not rocket science, but, but it is a method and that that method is in some ways the inverse of what we all think, which is waking enough people up. It doesn't work that way. And it's not, it's what, what this method is, is, and you see it through the prophets they, they, and the messengers, um, some of whom are in the Bible, some of whom are not in the Bible. But this, this repeats again and again and again. And the way it works is this. A, a, a prophet comes, there is a renewal. Well, actually, there's a destruction and then there's a renewal. The new society begins to kind of lift up. Uh, it then turns into complete depravity, which is where we are now, with, with a miscreant elites. Lead the people. People follow. I mean, now they follow through sort of various layers of duplicity, but they're essentially sheep. They follow what the actual agenda is. OK, so I don't blame them. I don't blame those people. I, I don't hold them to account. Exactly. God knows. I don't know. But I, I'm only interested in the elites. So I forget about the, the, the mass of people. The, 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 the Quranic method is, is to warn those elites. That's actually the way that it works based on this book. And that's what that's what I worked out. So what I did was I wasn't interested in masses of people. I wasn't interested in influencing lots of people. I wasn't interested in arguing with Muslims and mullahs and all the rest of it. You, they haven't been able to work this out 1400 years. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to help on that score. But I worked out what this recipe for Victoria sponge cake was. And from this book, which claims to be from God, it claims to be preserved. It says that it's a, a recipe book, essentially. It's a guidance for those who follow it. And so I just followed it. I, I didn't, because the, the point I came to which was my kind of moment of decision was when my wife and I were living in Spain. And I, I, I just quickly say we had kind of decided to move to Spain and I had it in my mind. I wanted to live on the beach in Spain and run my own business from there. And I got there and after two weeks, I was bored out of my mind. OK, <laughs> so, and I remember thinking this, this, this works, this, this, this mechanism of being completely focused on something, because once I set my mind to it, decisions were easy i'm either getting closer to my goal or further away from it and i acquired all of those you know you see these people who just know exactly what to do all the time i was that guy because i knew exactly what i wanted to do and i realized that you know what i've discovered a really important principle here i can apply this to anything this principle is like functioning you can apply it you can put any inputs in and get outputs what would i do what would i do if i could do anything and i knew the answer it was obvious i'd overthrow these people that's what i would do and so the question to them was how do you do that not in terms of what a lot of the people are going to like but how do you actually do it well you look at the past what worked in the past and we still have parts of this in the bible the story of noah that's that's precisely what he was going through that's precisely what he did forgetting about the ark aspect of it sort of but, but what he did was he warned his people and then the punishments of God became binding. That's that's the mechanism. Warning first, and then there's destruction. Now, am I in favour of all that destruction? No, I'm not. I wish I wish there were a different way, but I can see where we're going. I don't have to jump off this cliff with this maelstrom of strom of, of of lemmings hurling themselves into the abyss. I don't need to do that to know where that's going. I can see where it's going because I have a brain. So unfortunately. <laughs> and this isn't going to be an easy sell, and I understand that. But apocalypse is preferable to the alternative. 
because the alternative that they have in mind is so horrific, it's going to be a perfected form of slavery forever. That's what they want. They're transhumanists. Now, I can either get on board with the how evil they all are and start screaming and shouting about that, which I managed to refrain from, at least publicly. I have done in my life, but at least publicly. publicly. I have done it with family members and, and had some of the similar experiences to you. But I realized, you know, that this, this doesn't work. Mm. And enough people doesn't work. What worked in the past? And when I, because of my knowledge of the Quran, I, I knew that it had this. And I, I wrote a book which... I'm not selling books. You can people can get my work for free. Perhaps you'll put a, a link below. But if they go to samgerins.com or quarternight.com, you, you, they get to it and they can download it for free. You take it for free. Pre, read it. That's my proof. That's my evidence. This isn't an opinion. I mean, it is an opinion, but it's a it's an argumented opinion based on uh, a, a, a brutal analysis of this text. That is what it is saying. This isn't. Uh, mainstream Muslims wouldn't disagree that, that the interpretation of the text are correct. What they think is this was just long ago and far away, but it's not. It is a recipe book, and that recipe book, um, I'm, I'm, I don't want to get sort of Islamic on you, but it's the, the term sunat Allah. It means the, the, the kind of the habit or the, the practice of God. It doesn't change. It says it doesn't change. Well, if that's true, if that's true, then this mechanism still works. It's a protocol, and you can you can execute that protocol. So that's what I that's what I did. That's some of my kind of introductory stuff. That's what I was kind of alluding to. It's horrific if you think about it. You know, I have children. I, I I'm not a psychopath. I don't want to die. I don't want this. But I know what the alternative is. And if they finish, if they get, I live in Russia, so and I have a background in Russia. I know what democide looks like. 60 million people were murdered, at least, by the, the government in this country. So I don't have any problem understanding that they're going to do this on a worldwide basis. I was finishing all this work as COVID was in full, full kind of full song. And so I, I had a sense that I had to finish this. And straight after COVID, we come into actually World War Three, which we are living in now. The West haven't been told. They they think that they're that the Ukrainians are, are winning against the Russians. The the propaganda anyway. I won't get into it. The propaganda is total. The, 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 it's total, and this is not because they're stupid people. It's just that they haven't got the defense mechanisms against propaganda. So to answer your question, um, I I took the line early on that I was going to take the ancient role, rule, which is I mean if you look at you know, Jesus, I mean that was Jesus. He only had twelve disciples. Do you know what I mean? He, he wasn't a popularist by any stretch of the imagination. So in answer to what can you do, my advice to people would be make peace with God. That would be my advice. Uh, I'm not saying you ha you know follow what I believe. You know, be be clear on what you believe and why, because you're going to be tested in it. Because this this system that's coming up the coming you know up the pike is an anti God anti Christ system. It really is. And so, you know, you need to be sure on what you believe because you're going to be tested on it. It's going to come to eating or not eating. It's going to, you know, being able to protect your children or not. So that would be the first thing. The second thing I would say is the way I look at it is I kind of, what I said earlier about uh, uh, a quote from the gladiator, what we do in life echoes in eternity. But the way I work is I sort of, I'm like a fisherman. I've got my hook and I fling it forward into eternity and I hook it in there and I'm reeling myself in. That's the way I see it. So I, I see things from, which would be the medieval way of looking at things. There's nothing unique about any, really anything that I'm saying here or what I'm re really doing. And again, this is why I was attracted to your work and took it seriously. It's because an understanding of the past, we're not making progress. We're collapsing. We're collapsing. This is the Kali Yuga. We are in the Iron Age. The ancients understood that this would be the last, the worst, the most oppressive and the most evil society. We're at the end of that and I don't, I don't see that in terms of being negative, if you want to use that kind of terminology. I, I, it's being realistic. Uh, um, I mean, to use the sort of, you know, Christian, Christianism, you know, that the prophets of his day waited to see that. They wanted to see this. The prophets of old would have loved to have seen where we are right now because they would have understood it. Mm -hmm. And just because, you know, I don't have a million likes or a hundred thousand billion subscribers or whatever, I don't care. Um I am able in this time to express, articulate these things, make this work available to warn the elite, which I've done. And for that to be online 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all over the world, that's never been possible before. I, I, I'm, I take my little slice and I'm very grateful for it. I've done my work. So in answer, I don't, 
I, there, there isn't going to be a great awakening. Most people are, there are going to be three forms of slavery. Okay, there's going to be gold, silver, and platinum. And people are going to want the platinum okay? because that's just what they're like. And that's fine. I don't, mm. it sounds like I'm judging. I'm not judging, but they, they, to use, um, oh, I'm blanking on his name, uh, Bertram Russell, you know, they will be trained to love their servitude, trained to love it. And they already do. It's, uh, and that's why they follow this propaganda. It's not because they're stupid. It's not because they're bad. It's because the, they are of a particular background, and what they should have happened is noblesse oblige, an obligation upon the elites to lead the the masses in a rational way towards eternity. This is the big thing because what we're having right now, this time, is gone like that, and you know we're going to be in eternity. So, in answer to your question, that would be my advice: make peace with God as you understand Him to be hook your cast your hook into eternity and work on on and if you want to actually be revolutionary be righteous lead a clean life don't womanize you know you don't have to threaten other people's faces just just learn in a in the, the arabic t term is taqwa it's a um, prudent fear of god it's almost like it's like a superpower you have to practice it it's like anything it's a it's a habit you know you're tested and pulled about but but that 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 the the medieval man would have understood this. What I'm saying now, he would have just gone, yeah. And what else is new? You know, he mm -hmm. he he. It's but to say it now sounds radical in some way, but it isn't. It's actually a traditional way of looking at, at the world, and and understanding that you know your your death isn't on social media. No one's going to care. I mean, they may care personally, you know, uh, family and so on. But what I'm trying to say is, you're born alone, you die alone, and that's the pathway. And it's, it's sticking to that and, you know, the rudiments of that. And uh, the, the, the problem with the when enough people wake up ism and the problem with, um, you know, the kind of social media aspect is that actually what, what used to be, what it does is sort of turn this prudent fear of God, this kind of piety, which is the old word, which has been rather kind of, uh, has been sort of um, infected, you know, with, with other sort of nuances. But it's a form of, of, of weaponized electronic piety people are aware of all these other people watching them well a medieval man had the same conception of the, of the angels when he's in his cell praying to god 14 hours a day or whatever it was we're living in a kind of a uh, almost like a mirror image it's a fake spirituality and so my you know my answer is f find god make peace with god and lead a pious life that that's that's the what that would be my advice because and this is, you know, I'm not reaching here. We, we could literally be destroyed at any moment. If nuclear weapons are real, okay, if they are, then 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 we're, you know, we're on the brink of Armageddon. So, so you know, we've got external proof if, if there wasn't any proof before. And even if that weren't the case, <clears throat> um, you know, three school years and 10, I mean, you're 40 already, right? I mean... It's, and, and we don't even know how. I mean, like we could, we could, you know, I could be struck down, you know, crossing the roads, you know, in th three hours from now. This, the way I'm talking is, a lot of people would see it's negative or this, that, and the other. It isn't those things. It's, it's the old way of doing things. It's the, the piety. It's, it, it's, it's not even. This isn't even esoteric. This is meat and potatoes, basic faith. And we, we're just, we're so degraded now that what I'm saying, which would have been, you know. A kind of uneducated friar would have been able to articulate this 500 years ago. Me saying it now in 2023, it sounds as though you know, what's this guy on? But actually, what I'm saying, most men throughout of his throughout history would have just kind of gone, mm, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. It just shows how far we've come, how far we, how far gone we are. Right. That, no, I, I I agree that the the internal work of you know developing yourself into the kind of person that could lead or if not lead just be an example uh, of the th type of humanity that's necessary that's definitely the type of internal work that everyone should be doing do you think there's an external component to it though because the thing i was saying about trying to wake everybody up or writing books and making videos and podcasts and talking all these things are all externalizing that they're it's all projecting in a sense the, if, if the only thing that's really needed is internal spiritual work, I can get rid of this internet connection and I can just do my 
yoga and meditation and the things that I do anyway and go full time on that and get rid of all these stresses I was talking about and all these free time I don't have because I'm externalizing everything, trying to wake everybody up. Do you think there is some aspect of externalization that needs to happen or is beneficial? Um, or do you think it's none of like, it would be better if nobody even knew who Eric Dubé was and then just some once in a while, you know, some strangers came upon him and was like, wow, I met this guy and he's just, you know, because he's done the internal work. He didn't waste all his time making flat earth videos and writing books. He's been doing yoga and meditation and trying to find God and, and everything for however long. Would that, because I've considered it, I mean, I do it. I, I basically, you know, I see him as yin and yang. So personally, I think they are both important and need to be done. But uh, yeah, I guess I want to hear from you what what part of the work as a man and as, as a truther or whatever you want to call it, do you think is external and, and how much is internal and of the external, what, what, what do you think is actually beneficial then other than being a pious and, and good person? I think it's both. I think I, I agree with you that it's both. But um, I suppose I would say this. You have a Christian background, and so do I. So the idea of um, delivering your soul to something, I, I think I would use that as my as, as my way of describing it. Um, if we take the Quranic position, it's that God guides or he doesn't guide. It's That's where the decision is made. But say, for example, if we, if we take the recipient of the Quran, his, his job, and this is what, you know, if we're following him, if that's what the actual thing is about, then we do that too, is, you know, warn. But, you know, the the result is not on you. Your job is to warn. You warned, okay, now they're culpable. And the, the, the mechanism is after that. I mean, there's only one prophet in the Quran who was actually successful in this sense. And that was jo uh, Jonah, uh, who sent to Nineveh. And this this exists in the Quran, doesn't state that it was Nineveh, but he was sent. And it says that he was, he was angry. He became angry. He was seething. He was one of the, he was a, Jonah was a seether. And he was, <laughs> he was basically not pleased that God didn't destroy these people after he'd been sent to them. But the thing is, is they repented mm -hmm. and, you know, they actually turned around. Um, but that's the only case, and the Quran says it, it says it itself that is, except for the case of Jonah, hmm. everybody else was a failure. If you want to, mm -hmm. if you want to call it in those terms. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, the way that I see it, seeing it from a kind of a, through a, a purely Quranic lens, um, I uh, have have done my work, and so there is a, there is an external component. Certainly, it's not about just sitting there, you know, meditating or, you know acquiring good habits or learning not to swear when people cut you off on the street or whatever it is. And um, there's an element of that, but there is an external part of it. But the, the results of it, I mean, to take the Apostle Paul, you know, one man sows, another man waters, but it's God who giveth the increase. So I see it in that way. I'm not responsible for results. I'm responsible for what I can do. I can, I spent my primary intellectually um, kind of robust years between 45 and 55, producing my work. I gave that as it was consecrated, if you want to put it in those terms. Um, and I have no control over the result. I'm simply doing that work mm. and following a, following a tradition, a scripture that I didn't write. I mean, people people write to me, complain about what the Quran says. I don't want to take it up with God. You know, if, 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 I'm not the author. I'm just doing, I'm just the translator. The, this isn't on me. Mm. Um, I, I, so so there is an external aspect, but I, I'm, I my days of trying to force, you know, horses to water uh, are, are gone. They're done. Mm -hmm. I've made my work as accessible as I possibly can. Um, I've produced, I don't know, five, four hundred, five hundred videos. I don't know. I've over nine years, like you, consistency. Mm -hmm. But um, understanding the time that I live in, and I, I've got a couple of books I wanted to wanted to recommend because I know that you're a reader. But one chap that really explains some of this is a chap called a French writer called René Guénon. I'll send it to you by Skype later. Oh, yeah. but I know René Guénon. Okay, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crisis of the modern world, and also um, 
uh, Signs of the Times and the Reign of, uh, Reign of Quantity. And uh, those two books I, I really recommend for people to read. So um, we, we are, according to wiser men than me, at, 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 at the end of, I don't know, it might be, it might be another hundred years, it might be another five hundred years. I don't know, but we are in the, the to use the Vedic terminology in, in the Kali Yuga. This is the Iron Age. It is the this is the heaviest age going from the. We've been we're not progressing. We're com, it's a, it's a complete collapse from the Golden Age down to where we are now, which which was which was seen certainly in the Vedic scriptures as a time of horrific godlessness and and immorality and all the rest of it. So I can't change that. I that is beyond my put it simply, Stephen Covey's, you know, if you've ever read, you know, the, the habits of highly inter of intellectual of uh, influential people, mm -hmm. you've got your circle of you've got your circle of concern and you've got your circle of influence. So for example, most people's cir circles of concern are far greater than their circles of influence. But there are other people who's it's the other the inverse, like you know, Charles, for example, or Bill Gates, mm -hmm. the things they're actually concerned about are far less than what they could actually do. So what I do is I, I've made the decision to focus on what I can do. I've done that. And when you when you've done it, you've done it. Now, when I when we talked earlier about warning the elite, this was a, a legal a legal letter informing them of uh, I mean, I'm, I won't go into the details of it now, but but uh, informing them of, of the existence of this body of work and on the basis of actually a couple of scriptures actually putting them on notice i know it sounds insane but this this is this is the recipe mm -hmm. i i didn't invent this i just read it and understood it and so from that point on and that was i think it was a, a year and a half ago two years ago we did this uh, it was two years ago they, they went out um after which we had the you know end of covid and then moved into world war three uh they are on notice. The results of that are not on me. I'm not God. I didn't write the Quran. I have no idea. I'm just I'm just a translator, a writer, an analyst, somebody who cares about what the truth is. So beyond that, I I I still choose to make YouTube videos to try to help a subset, and I know it's a small number of people, understand how propaganda works. Because the problem with propaganda is that whereas nuclear war can kill your body and obviously that's an undesirable probably for most people uh propaganda can take you to hell because you know if you believe a lie and you really believe it not what people say they believe but what they actually believe and that's why i'm i i i do that but trying to kind of get to the answer i i know i know that i'm not going to be able to reach large numbers of people and i don't see that as my problem my my i, I i'm i do what i can do and and I, I trust God for the rest of it. But I, I don't just, you know, I didn't just sort of randomly write something on some, you know, angel fire substack something, you know. No, I've produced work consistently. <laughs> and people, you know, they you get a sense of somebody over a long period of time, whether, you know, they're nuts or not, whatever it is. And, and I have people who support me, you know, literally have supported me through the bulk of this work. And so, but I understand that in all likelihood, it's... Uh, I'm not going to be able to reach people and I understand it and I accept it. It's not, it's not easy. You walk around, you, you see children and, you know, families and this, that, and the other, but let's be honest, Derek, they've all got an iPhone and a, and, and, and an index finger in the eyeballs. Mm -hmm. You choose where to spend your money. Well, then you choose where to spend your time. That's the answer. And there's a point at which where I, I don't care. I've done my job. It's in the English language, the most spoken language on the face of the earth. Hundreds of millions of people speak this language who are not even native English speakers. The elites all speak this language. It's the, it's the lingua franca. I mean, I, I had to ask myself, why is it that I, why, why wouldn't it be an Arab? Somebody who speaks native Arabic. No, I'm a native English speaker. I speak the language of the ruling elites. So do you. So I, that's the way I see it. I see it in those terms. But beyond that, beyond that, um, it's out of my hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. Thanks for that answer. Um, <laughs> I, I'm thinking. I wanted to to talk about something else as well. When we first discussed, you were talking about uh, how so many people, kind of, like uh, Bruce Lee said, the um, 
it's like a finger pointing to the moon. And then he hits him on the head and he says, don't concentrate on the finger or you'll miss all that heavenly glory. Yeah. As if most people are looking to the signpost as if the signpost is the answer, is the thing in itself, rather than understanding to look at the thing that the signpost is pointing towards. Now, I've read the Bible, the Christian Bible. I have read the Quran. You know, I have read the Agama Sutras of the Jainists. I've read the Lotus Sutras of the Buddhists. I've read the Tao Te Ching of the Taoists. Uh, I've read most scriptures that exist of current religions that still exist today. I haven't found any one that I thought was written by God or exclusively the truth to the to the exclusion of all the others. What I found was that it was like this finger pointing to the moon and that people who are choosing one book or one religion and saying this is the entire truth all in itself encapsulated here from God are looking at the finger and they're like this is it. But all religions, all holy books, all spirituality is talking about a thing that can't be talked about and pointing to a thing that can't be pointed at. And so I feel like they all have equal merit in the sense that, of course, all religious texts and um, spiritual texts are inspired by God, which is what they'll say rather than, you know, it was handwritten by God. No, no, he, he works through people. Oh, okay, so God didn't write it. A person wrote it, right? You're admitting that. Yes, yes, but it was inspired through God. Okay, well, I was inspired by God to write spiritual science, I could say. It was my spirituality book. It has mention of God and concepts of God and all these things. Um, but I wouldn't say that God wrote it. God wrote the Eric Dubay book, Spiritual Science. But the Bible, so many people think that, or the Quran, so many people think that. Um, uh, I'm curious, have you, as you're well known for the Quran, in your personal belief structure or whatever, do you feel that you have chosen that book or chosen that one religion and that that signpost is the moon? Or do you think, just like I'm saying, that it, it's pointing to something and just for you, that particular signpost is the one that points the most directly to the thing that makes the most sense for you? Is, okay. Yeah. Uh, I get it. I, I I need to kind of go back a little bit because there's, there was, an, in my view, some incorrect assumptions, at least in my case, in that. I mean, if we take, let's start with the Bible, for example. I, I, I mean, an objective reading of the Bible does not claim that you could not claim that the entire Bible is inspired by God because quite clearly parts of it are introductions from men, you know, are, you know, let's take the, Letter, letters from prison to to yeah, random exactly. churches and stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, so, you know, we're talking about a subset in this case, best case scenario. So that's one point. The second point would be that the Bible doesn't regard itself as a book. Nowhere does it use the word Bible discussing itself as a book. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Third point would be there are, which Bible do you mean? Are we talking about, I mean, for the difference between the Catholic Bible and the Protestant Bibles, are we talking about the Hebrew Bibles? <clears throat> and, you know, let's take, for example, um, uh, Martin Luther, you know, who then translated it into German, he, he took Revelation out and then he stuck it back in again, you know, at which point was it the actual Bible? So what it, what the Bible is, is a library. And and I'm fine with that. It's a library compiled by men over, over periods of time where men have made a decision to keep or not keep certain parts of that book in. Um, I've read the Bible as, as have you, and there are parts of the Bible that I still read. Uh, the, the book of Ecclesiastes is is a keeper as far as I'm concerned. It's 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 you know, true philosophy, whether it was written by Solomon or not. I don't know, but it's certainly an excellent book of philosophy. Are there um, is is the uh, uh, you know is the Pentateuch a, a, a complete and correct, totally written by Moses book uh, series of books, five books? Well, it can't be because it includes his death. You know, I mean, clearly somebody added that, whoever wrote the rest of it. So, you know, there is this whole area of, of, of scriptural analysis, which makes some fair points. Uh, and, and I would agree with a lot of those points. Um, taking the, so, so I think what happens with a lot of people, certainly what happened to me when I first read the Bible, is that it was the first encounter that I'd ever had with uh, in, a, a kind of 
God interface in terms of scripture, even though the books that appealed to me, um, the first book that appealed to me, in fact, was Ecclesiastes. But you, what you find is you're then getting kind of roped into suddenly, you know, you're reading Romans 13 or, or, or Hebrews or Galatians or something, and it's over the hills and far away. You, you, and in fact, if you look at the way, I mean, I'll get onto the Quran in a moment, but if you look at the way the Bible is actually uh, presented in the Protestant traditions, you go from the book of Malachi, and then, then you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which you get, you've got the three synoptic gospels, which are they're basically the same. And then you've got, you've got John, who's like the kind of, he's like the dope smoking surfer of, of you know, of, of gospel writers which is you know, gnostic and you know way out there and and that's the one that they tend to go to with you know i you know i'm the way the truth and life and you know i am the father of one they all tend to be john and then when you finish with john what you get into is acts and acts starts off with you know the disciples and there so but 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 what they're going to do is shoehorn paul into you by the time you get to the end of acts it's all about paul you started it's off with paul one, for like the next 15 and, chapters it's the next 15 chapters of basically Paul. So what you're getting is, and, and, and actually, historically, Paul wrote this, he wrote his, he got his say in first, uh, in terms of when, when, when the scriptures, these, you know, the Christian canon was written, he wrote first, he was the big writer, he was the big, the big guy. And then uh, you've got Mark was, was written, and then John was written last, probably. And th there are ways of assessing this. You can ascertain this. So there is, a, uh, there is a way of approaching this as a kind of a compilation of a library over time in, 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 a, in, a, in a context. And I accept that that's the case. What I, what I don't accept, and where I would, I would back you know, more sort of Christian fundamentalists, if you want to put it that way, is that they overstate their case these people and they get into a point where it's all just a sociological construct well I, I don't believe that's i don't believe that's true what you could argue that it is you know we're talking about you know sort of helio theology and the, you know why did he have 12 disciples and there's a sun and the 12 you know the planets moving around all the rest of it i understand all of that and 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 so did the ancients actually this wasn't unknown uh, i mean if you look at the sky today and look, look at the, we, we we look at a pagan sky and there was an attempt to rename the constitutions after Christ, uh, with Christian after, names, and and yeah. the reason they didn't do it is they realised it would give you know they suddenly realised you know oh dear it would it would all become too obvious what's going on and that's why they decided not to do it. Yeah. I get that and I understand the esoteric arguments and so on and I get all of that and I understand that the priests would have believed a completely different kind of set of beliefs to the laity. That's normal in any in any caste system and. And, and the Romans would have understood this. What the, what the centurions believed and what the generals believed were completely different. But they were working within an integrated, interlocking set of kind of beliefs fundamentally. So that 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 that's the first thing. And and I have to say, I think that the the Bible is a uh, whatever we mean by the Bible it has within it uh, a valid pathway. It it does. It's not so crucial which workshop you're in as it is what you do with your tools. But it doesn't mean that. All workshops, in my view, are always the same all the time. And I'm going to get to this and just answer the Quranic part of this. The Quran is a different type of text. And it treats itself as a book. It talks to, about itself as a book. It says while the Quran is being sent down, the Quran is from the, uh, it, it, it means it means recital, something which is recited. And it, it regards itself as, as a text, as a complete finished thing. So that's that's a major difference to to the Bible. The first thing, the second thing, it says that prophets have come and gone in in time before. Some of them you know about, some of them you don't know about, and that the religion that they brought was this thing called Islam. Now this is the point at which you're going to people are going to jump on you, and they're, they're going to tell you all about Islam. They're going to tell you exactly what it is and how to follow it and, and all the rest of it, but. We see examples in the Quran, if you actually look to the text, of what it was to practice Islam. Because what Islam actually just means, it means submission. It means submission to God. So in the case of the father of the monotheistic religions, being Abraham, um, God says to him, submit. And he says, which is Aslam. And he says, Aslam tu li rabbil alamin. He says, I have submitted to the Lord of the worlds. That was his entry into Islam. It wasn't taking the Shahada or going to Mecca or any of this other stuff. So what I'm trying to say is this religion has been added to this book. 
later. It's a completely separate narrative. It doesn't mean that, you know, all bets are off now, you just live how you like and so on and so forth. It's a very simple thing. Um, now, to to address, you know, other scriptures, other um, other teachers, the Quran would, ex it, it doesn't, it, 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 it's not, it's not uh, kind of like an, a f free and open, um, you know, kind of free for all, but it acknowledges that there have that there have been prophets and warners to every society, every society. Well, if that's the case, then how did how did the Incas receive knowledge? How did the ancient Egyptians receive knowledge? How did the Nubians receive knowledge? Every people is every people, right? How did the, you know the Vedic scriptures? What the Quran is and claims to be is that that over a process of time, uh, it uses the word ayat, which is signs or proofs. Some are lost and some are replaced. But the Quran regards itself. You can disregard it. You can you say, okay, I don't believe this. But it regards itself as this kind of final installation of of scripture from God, whilst it recognizes that the other scriptures and other installations of these kind of of these revelations have existed. So it's not it's not quite this. Um, and I don't even think that most traditionalist Muslims would claim this. Educated traditionalist Muslims, educated in the Quranic sciences. They wouldn't claim that this book and only this way and no other. That's not in the Quran. Um, so that would be the way that I would see it. It, it doesn't mean. I mean, it's. It, it doesn't mean that it's just you know go off and do whatever you like. It, it's actually. It's actually harder than just being told what to do. But but the, the, there's a difference between what traditionalist Islam will tell you and what this book actually says. But in terms of what the Quran itself actually talks about, it talks about other other warners other prophets going to previous nations and then receiving scriptures it talks about different scriptures so it's not uh, it's not it's not like christianity but with a beard mm -hmm. because what christianity does is it's i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me so if you're not going to you know ask pray and ask jesus into your heart you're damned that's it this doesn't exist in the quran it's just not there however when I read the Quran, I noticed how often the concept of belief and disbelief, believers and disbelievers, and what what goods will come to the believers and what bads will come to the disbelievers is yep. repeated over and over again throughout the whole thing. So I, I, in reading it, did actually get the same kind of, though I, I agree with you, it, it clearly says that there were other prophets and they, they give due credit to other prophets and other nations. And so it does seem a bit more inclusive in that sense. How, however, uh, the the whole belief disbelief thing is one thing that it's always been an issue for me. And the other thing, the other thing is very specific rules exist in the Quran. For example, about how to be with a wife. Like this is, if your wife is insolent, first you should admonish her. Then if she doesn't reform her ways, refuse to sleep in bed with her. <laughs> and then if that doesn't work, hit her lightly. <laughs> okay. And then if after you hit her lightly, uh, the, she still hasn't reformed her ways, then you can divorce. And then later on, it gives like specific things about divorce. So it'll say like, if you divorce your wife, uh, you cannot remarry unless you yourself have remarried. She has also remarried. And then quite, both, but yeah, I yeah. think this is how it goes. And then it's both of you have divorced those people you remarried, and then you come back together to love each other and want to remarry. Then you are allowed to remarry after a divorce. But in in any other circumstance, you're not. And so, and even if I've gotten if, this if slightly say, wrong, that, 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 that's half correct. Yeah, that, okay. But I take the point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Even if I've gotten that slightly wrong, the thing that I come to when I read stuff like that is it seems so ridiculously human <laughs> it seems so specific that i wouldn't think that god would write that or even inspire somebody to write something so ridiculously specific and make it like that uh, could apply to every man and every woman in every situation um, for example i don't think i don't think physical violence even lightly is worthy i would skip right to step Four rather than going to step three, um, and I, I don't know. I just think it's funny that something like um, "don't sleep in bed." Step two is don't sleep in the same bed. Or, um, 
Or, or I mean, there's other funny things like um, Islam says there's a passage about how women should cover up, cover up their their bodies, and even not to um, strike the ground too hard when they walk, so that their covered parts uh, move. <laughs> In other words, like God doesn't want people seeing women's boobs shake or something. He 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 must hate 2023. Um, now, I mean, I am all for uh, modesty and, and a lot of these things I'm talking about. Um, I actually like the thing about uh, remarrying first someone else and then realizing you want to come back. So it, it actually makes a bit of sense. So even that um, rule, like I can see the sense behind some of these things, but human life is so sp person specific. But these holy books are always like creating blanket rules for all of us like we're all the exact same and all situations are exactly the same and so every time a wife is insolent this is the steps that the husband must take to you know it's like and this is from god and it's in a holy book that people revere to the to that degree and when i read it it just made me laugh out loud to be honest and so i'm curious how, how do you feel when you see what well, one was the belief non-belief this two-part question the yeah, whole I'm thing about it. belief and non-belief really turns me off. And it's like, if you don't believe everything that I'm saying in this book, you're going to burn in hell. And if you do believe it, Allah is going to give you all the best things in, in, in this life and the afterlife. Okay. And, and also the specific rules that make me feel like this is very human written and not from God. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, before I go through them, because I've, I've jotted those down, was there anything about it that you did like? I, I, at the very beginning, I noticed that they were talking about generosity and giving, and then they even went so far as to say about how if you can give, give without expectation of re reward, and then even more so, give without, basically give anonymously, so that you can't even be rewarded, that's the, that is the best gift. It's like the most altruistic, it's the most selfless way that you can give. I talked about it in my Asbestos Head book, which I is Asbestos said is an amalgamation of me, Jesus, and Santa Claus. And uh, in the beginning, he starts giving gifts away, like Santa does, leaving them on people's doorsteps and running away, ringing the bell and stuff, so that people have to be confronted with the fact that somebody in this world just blessed my life like this, and I can't even thank them. I can't even know who it is. So rather than be able to reciprocate back to the selfless person that gave it to me, I have to wonder which of these people in this world is, is this wonderful soul. And it and it makes you now have to basically treat everybody else like any of them could have been this person that blessed my life. And so by doing so, you have changed that person you gifted to in a way in which they now have to look at strangers and society at large in at least a little bit more positive light. And that mm -hmm. really is a good a good thing. And, and that is said basically, I mean, not in those words, but um, I noticed that was written in the Quran and I liked I liked that. So there's, there's little specific things like that that I did like. Um, but to be honest, of all of the uh, scriptures I've read from the, the Vedas, the Tao, Lotus Sutras, the Gama Sutras, and even the Bible, I liked the Quran the least. Okay. And and it's, it's been interesting. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about it because sure, okay. because of that because you seem yep. to have felt uh, the complete opposite. No, I didn't. I mean, I, at, at certain points, I just um, I, I've made a couple of notes because, but I, I just wanted to say on the on the giving thing on the, on the charity thing, not just the receiving aspect of it, but actually the giving aspect of it is more difficult than people imagine, because they think, oh well, it's just a matter of you know opening up a wallet and giving money <clears throat> but actually that's the least of it it's learning to give to give without humiliating the recipient that's that's a difficult thing right. to, to give whilst leaving that man or woman's self-respect intact that's a difficult thing it, it, the whole act of giving is, is is more fraught than people imagine and so mm -hmm. it's not just it's not just the giving it's not just give, the giving the money <clears throat> but the ability to give in a way which is uh, satisfying to the recipient it's it's a hard thing to do um 
I mean, I can, I can, I, I, I've got some notes, but I just say my first, my first reading of the Quran, uh, that I'll be clear, uh, honest, there were just parts of it which in the English translation didn't make any sense to me. Uh, it's a very disjointed read from, it can appear to be given from what we're used to. Uh, we, you know, we sort of chapter one, verse one, you know, we start in the beginning there was God and, you know, and the rest of it. <clears throat> I'll just say on that score that, what I've understood, and it took me a long time to get this, is that the Quran is access is accessible to our generation in a way that I think it hasn't been to a lot of generations, because what it actually is is a it's a cinem, cinematic presentation, in the sense that we're used to fade to black new scene, and that's the way it works. And because we we think in that sort of way now, that that that's that's accessible to us. Um, okay, I'm going to go through your your points. Uh, the, f the first one is to do with belief and disbelief. So I agree with you to some extent, and I'll, it just feeds back into what I was talking about at the beginning and trying to give us a, a, a sort of summary introduction. There's a translation of the Quran by Dr. Uh, Hilal in Khan. And these are died in the war. I'm going to have to just get to that call. They died in the war, you know, dagger wielding, as it were, um, cut your head off type of you know I, i'm i'm being unfair but it's uh this what they do is they they translate the quran as completely as per kind of quite a more radical understanding of this book all right now i can tell you that if the quran meant what they said it means my engagement with the quran would have lasted you know a day okay but i've actually spent well prelim like 10 years and then and a full on 10 years on this book so so that's that's the first thing <clears throat> now you mentioned this word, word belief what was happening with a traditionalist and you can tell what he, he thinks that the quran means because because you can read his translations they'll tell you right there and that's what you read it's what i read when i first read it etc is that what they're doing essentially <clears throat> excuse me is conflating this book with a religion this is a bait and switch. What they, they, they're going to do is they're going to say this book describes that religion. There's a one-to-one a -one relationship between these two things. And that's just not true. It And I've, I, I've proven it. You know, I've proven it on the basis of not my opinion or outside data, but of, of the actual internal internals of the Quran itself. Now, you use the word belief. Now, what will, what, what will be expected for you to understand by this word belief, believers and unbelievers? What they mean is believers in the religion of islam or unbelievers in the religion of islam this isn't just my opinion these are unsustainable values for this book i know because i've been through every single instance of the two words that you you mention and uh, let's take for example i mean the, the word believer is 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 mu'min mu'minun in 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 the plural and uh, kafir or kafirun in the plural if we're talking about unbelievers i'll just take unbeliever as as, as an example cuz i could give a four hour lecture about this but i don't think you know your audience would would be up for it i'm just going to give one idea okay so we have this word al kafirun which is if you read the the, the, the arabic translations is the unbeliever infidel denier Okay, <clears throat> somebody who doesn't believe primarily in the religion of Islam, but secondarily in the God which Islam will tell you about. Thirdly, uh, uh, just a thoroughly bad chap, that those people. Okay, but it's quite clear if you just read the first two and a half pages of the well, of the of the second surah, which is the first long one. In fact, the longest, Al Baqarah. Uh, you you get to a description of something which then ends up with um, talking about. Uh, uh, Satan, and he says, minel kafirin." He was of the unbelievers. Are we saying that he well, he didn't believe in uh, or the denies he, that he was he rejected he rejected the religion of Islam? Is that is that is that what you're saying? Well, no, that can't be true. Are we saying that he be, didn't believe in God at all? Well, no, that can't be true either because he's he was uh, created by God and in fact, you know, as we know in the Bible, he, he he in the book of Job he discusses things with God and he addresses he addresses God in the Quran. So that can't be true either. So what does it mean? It, well, it, it does mean something. Well, clearly it has. A meaning, and going back to the um, the way of uh, this, what I call pan-textual analysis, the way that I, just, I approach this book and derive the meanings of words through this arduous and entirely uninteresting process of of, of 
analyzing every single root and every single word in every single in, in every single context um it's quite clear that it means something different and and what it actually means and it's quite clear if you if you if you do this and i have done this work <clears throat> to emulate to Sorry? emulate to emulate it, it's 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 a it's a false claimer of guidance it's someone who claims to believe something that they don't actually believe and it's it's quite close to a hypocrite uh would be a non-believer my, my 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 thing was i've thought that perhaps a believer or, or belief the the term they use belief is actually to emulate because for, for instance in the bible you, you'll see the word no k-n-o-w often yeah well in genesis it means to have sex of course she came to know adam or whatever yeah. but in other places it, it means what we we think it means it means to know sure. something to, to understand something and i had the exact same thought as i came across the word belief over and over again in the bible that maybe what they're saying is similar to when they say to know someone it doesn't mean to know him it means to have sex with them it's like wow totally different well to believe in jesus or to believe in the quran i thought that perhaps what they really meant is to emulate meaning to be the way that is being suggested so to to be a follower well, not a follower but to be an example of this jesus or the quran or you know um, allah or muhammad whatever these are examples and mm -hmm. the believer is the one who emulates the example and even if say say you believe mm -hmm. in a modern definition of believe but you you go off and you sin and you go off and you do things that aren't emulating the uh, what they said you should be doing then perhaps you could argue that even those people now are disbelievers even though they would say that they believe 100 percent they are I'm a, I'm a muslim or whatever but if they don't emulate are they a believer you know so maybe the word belief has some of this aspect of it. it actually has to do with how you be in the world versus just this thing of this faith this thing that i can never really wrap my head around where it's like yeah. you you throw out your your skepticism and your intellectual ability your discernment and intuition and as as if that's a boon as if that's a, a yeah. good thing and if yeah. you can't do it if you can't throw all those things out then there's something wrong with you like yeah uh, yeah. It's almost that, that, that God requires he can't survive without our gullibility or yeah. kind of <laughs> something like that. Um, I, I think you'd be I think you'd strain to find uh, support for that particular value in 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 the Quran. But I I mean the word is uh, al mu'minun, and uh, the actual root amina is to do with security and safety, and it's a, a form for participle based on that. Now, I had a similar. Um, cultural resistance against this belief thing just belief for belief's sake but for cultural reasons because of the kind of background that i had and because i think we you know we there's a bit of overlap in in our experience of how that word has been used to turn people's minds off um that isn't my understanding of this word in the quran uh, it, it simply isn't and it's it's partly to do with how language changes and it's 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 much closer I think a word that is is closer to it is faithful, and, the, and I use that word in its several senses. It's an inner truth. It's it's being faithful in the sense that a, a man was faithful to his Lord. It's not just what you say; it's what you do. A man you can claim to be faithful, a f good and faithful servant. E enter thou into the you know into the you know into the, the joy of thy Lord or whatever it is. A, a faithful servant isn't one who believes in his Lord. He's one who does what his Lord has asked him to do, and a quranic concept which uh, is certainly in the quran it's not just muslims talk about it is something called fitra and fitra it's uh, it's an innate nature that god has put within you you would you have it um it's not that you just follow your own lusts and your own imaginations but we have been given an internal compass there's no doubt about this and for 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 me at least um being true to my nature uh, compels me to acknowledge god that's that is truth as i understand it and i can only answer for myself i have no window into another man's soul if another man tells me he doesn't believe in god i have to acknowledge I, that he's telling me the truth but that's his truth okay fine you 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 have your you have your way i have my way that's the way i see it so it's, it's not sustainable on the basis of the quranic text to claim that believer is somebody who believes a only in the book of the Quran or B 
only in the religion of Islam. It's not sustainable because because there are believers who existed before the Quran was ever written and before the religion of ever, Islam had ever been heard of. So it's a ridiculous claim. I will accept, and I've had, believe me, I get death threats on the basis of this. So I, you know, I know I've, I've had to do my homework because I might have to die for it. So I, I've taken, you know, taken the time to to investigate this to to the extent that I can answer for myself on the day of judgment, as as I see it. So I had a, a I had a, a, a an emotional resistance against this word in the English translations, not just because I didn't like it; it's just it didn't fit. It doesn't fit in a whole load of contexts. Mm -hmm. So. I agree with you on that. We could discuss the, you know, the the subtleties of the of the linguistics. Um, I'd be quite happy to. In fact, you know, if you give me a address, I'll, I'll send you my books. You'd be welcome to peruse them at your leisure, and come to your own conclusions. But I, you know, I've done my homework and I present that, including on those two words, uh, ad nauseum in the notes. And if you, you if you want to go blind reading them, and you've got you know, <laughs> three days to spend on it, you're welcome to go through them and check all the references. So so that that's my answer on that one. Um, I hope that's sort of satisfactory given the time constraints that where we are. On the question of divorce, um, for me, reading the Quran, uh, what you find is that there are verses, and the Quran talks about this in uh, sort of three seven, where it it says that there are there are clear verses and there are let's say ambiguous verses. Okay, these two types of verses exist, yep. and there's, there's there's no question, but they do exist. And it says that, that those in whose hearts is is a sort of divergence, they follow the ambiguous ambiguous words uh, verses and they leave aside these other these other verses. There's quite a lot of that, so I just wanted to say that as by way of preamble in order to get into your into your large, your second point uh, about divorce and treatment of women and so on. And what you said was that it, this you know this, that this is only right and it's for all people at all times and God has given this and this is how you have to treat women. Well, that's I'll just correct a thing before I answer it. It's not for all people in all times. It's for believers, and in the sense that I'm using this word, it's for those people. How other believers, other people that treat their wives is a completely different issue. It's uh, it, it's quite clear. The, the Quran uses the vocative, which is you know when you when in some languages you have the vocative is what you might use to call somebody's name. So in English you might say, "Oh John," it's a way of calling John's attention. Uh, in in Arabic, the the vocative particle is "ya." So it's a "ya," you know, "ya Adam," "oh Adam." You know, so you often know who it's talking to. It actually addresses different categories of people. It talks to the the believers or in, in the terms that we've just discussed them, unbelievers, children of Adam. That's a completely different category. Oh, you know, oh, wives of the prophet. Well, that clearly doesn't ap apply now because the prophet's dead, and so his wives are all dead. So that that's you know something just historical interest. So you have all of these addressees which are being given, and you can you can, I've done it. You can go through and cut it up and go, okay, that's them, them, and and collate all of those pieces of information that were specifically for these different types of audiences what happens is that and i'm not here to defend or to attack you know what i call brand islam but it's a fact that they present a kind of fait accompli where we have this religion hey anyway, you read this book you like that book okay sign on the dotted line now go and follow this and check out your brain for the rest of your life and just hope everything's right when you die gives you money so mm -hmm. that's that is how it works and you know the mullahs and all of this it is how it works and um, I mean, I, I can talk about, you know, if you have time, you know, some of my experiences in, in that regard. But but to 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 get to the, the point about divorce, these are quite clear verses and they're, they're these are not uh, ambiguous verses. You're you know, when you read them, even even given the, the torturous translations of some of the more ideologically driven uh, Islamicists, it's not possible to misunderstand these. These verses are for a particular subset. Of humanity they're not for all of humanity and i'm sure you would agree that you know let's say in yoga for example or in martial arts there are certain things which are applicable to a certain type of person at a particular level which absolutely are would be completely wrong for another set of people because they're not at that level that it doesn't apply to them and i i would argue that what you've what you've uh, identified falls into that category it's identified to a very particular subset you know and the fact that let's say a white belt isn't going to be able to understand what a black belt can understand it, it, some of those sort of parallels i would i would argue kind of um occur here and the same would go for dress um what you would find if you were, if you were talking with a sort of as it were you know kind of more 
um, kind of died in the wool Islamicist is he's going to defend the Islamic position in all cases and you're an infidel and you're going to hell anyway and who cares so that would be it or he's going to argue about the morality of it um, what I'm going to say is again is that this is for believers it's not for everybody else. In fact, I could give you an alternative verse. For example, if we're talking about dressing, it tells it tells the believing women to dress in a particular way so that they shall be known to be believing women. It's so that they can be identified against all the other women walking around with almost nothing on. It's this isn't this isn't a wholesale imposition upon the entire society. It's so that people who form subsets and the Quran addresses subsets, it addresses, oh, children of Adam, okay, so that's everybody. Oh, you believers, okay, so there's these people. Oh, you know, whoever it is, oh, prophet. Now, this is this is one particular guy in this one particular situation. That's how I would arrange it. It's There's a taxonomy in force here of categories and subcategories and so on. And what happens is when so often the, the traditionalist takes a verse, and then just said, hey, well, the Quran says yes. Well, yes, the Quran does say that. The Quran says a lot of things. Who's it? Who's it addressing in this case? I mean, you can say the Bible says there is no God, and it does say it. In fact, it says it twice, and it says what it says is the fool has said in his heart there is no God, and then it continues to give the give the rest of it. Well, um, you know, the the traditionists will say, for example, what the prophet gives you, you must accept, and what he what he denies you, you must you must turn away from. Meaning, you have to shoehorn. 200 books of hadith into your into your mind that's that's what that's used for but if you look at the context he's talking about charity it's about it's about helping people who have left their communities to join a believing community and and the prophet is administering who's going to get what so they try, they're quoting half of one verse out of context without any of this stuff in order to justify an entire religious matrix mm -hmm. so i will accept completely that for moderns there are going to be aspects of the quran like the flat earth aspect which the quran mm -hmm. clearly contains mm -hmm. which they're not going to be able to accept they're not going to want to accept nobody's forcing anybody to accept anything uh, the quran itself says there is no there is no compulsion in faith and that's not just a that's not just a kind of like a, a, a concession it's a statement of fact you cannot force anybody to believe anything it's not possible it, it literally isn't possible you can force people to do things but you can't force them to believe anything so so that would be my argument with that now um as regards the quran as a text as a read i if if the quran itself meant what the hilali khan translation tells you that it means i'm an intelligent guy i'd have i'd, I'd, I'd have been done with this book in about an hour, you know a day but what happened was i i dug into it and over this period of 10 years, um, and, and I have to say, I'm not saying the Quran is any way you can believe in God or anything like this, but it, it's, it's the most recent writing that we have. And it claims to be from God. It claims that God will protect it. And it claims that it is complete. Well, that's either true or it's not. That's a Boolean logic. It's a Boolean gate. It's a yes, no. If, if that's not true, <clears throat> I'm going to the pub. You know, I'm, I've got other things I want to do with my time. I'm not out here looking for a religion i'm not out, out here because you know i really like antagonizing you know 1.6 billion muslims to see if i can't get myself suicided you know before <laughs> for lunch no i have other things to do with my time um what happened was that i as i dug into it deeper and deeper and deeper and realized that you know what i'm going to have to do this work myself because no one else has done it i was impressed by its structure and its contents but in the sense that firstly I'm not saying you have to learn Arabic to do it, but it does help if you're going to understand it. And all that work is, again, it's out there free. We've got it on interactive. You can, you know, get it to it all at reader.quarternight.com. I'm sure you'll put, you know, links down below or something. People can look me up, they'll find it. And so that work is all there. All you have to do is press a button and you can get to those answers. And what I felt my, my job was much more like a, um, is it paleontologist? Somebody who... Uh, structures of going through uh, stone and, and land and uh, no, it's not paleontology, that's not correct. Uh, uh, yeah, like an archaeologist. Sorry, yeah, archaeologist. I was, um, yes, paleontology is something else. I was kind of digging through layers and layers and layers of accretions that had been accumulated over over centuries of, an, of a different narrative. 
and I felt more like a yes, yeah, more like an archaeologist. I was just digging down through a layer. Okay, I've got to that layer, blowing off the the cobwebs. It, it there was very little invention. It wasn't it wasn't a creative process. It was a purely it wasn't a purely technical process, but it was it was an eighty percent technical, mm-hmm. and so and being surprised by it because I thought, okay, I've I've got it now. I've got you know this. I've got I found a fault. I found something's wrong, you know whoever it is whoever hates islam they've got you know because i went to these faqs of all the reasons why the quran's you know not from god great that's a really useful resource perhaps they're right let's find out you know that that was my position it's never been oh this book's from god i've got to you know i'm going to prove it because i'm you know on a, on a one-man crusade that wasn't my position but as i found as i dug into the details of it it does stack up and one of those subjects was 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 the shape of the earth because it, there's no question but that uh, the Quran says that the that God created the earth. He spread it out like a carpet. It spread it out flat. It's it the, the the sky is solid. It says it on the day of judgment. The, the sky will crack. Well, this is very clear uh, on 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 the on the type of uh, cosmology that we're talking about. And the Notice Quran is, it, uh, specifies that there's seven firmaments as well. The Bible talks about a firmament. The Quran says there's seven of them. It says that, and it's, it talks about seven, and the word is ard, which is uh, which is earth, um, or and and it says, and of the, uh, it's talking about, uh, and of them they're like. So it, it it talks about seven heavens and of, and of earth they're like. So it's. It, I was wondering that too. Do you think <clears throat> heaven and firmament are synonymous because they talk about seven heavens often and seven firmaments, and uh, in a lot of Christian. Um, uh, what do you call it? artwork they they have basically they separate the heavens like like in a dome like firmament structure and there's like first heaven second and all the way up to like god is is waiting there on the seventh heaven or something is is that uh is that how that what what is your what do you think seven firmaments and seven heavens means obviously i haven't been there so <laughs> it's surmise but the way that i um, understand it would be. Um, I, I, I think that we have we have the Earth, which is the hardest and the solidest. We have these other elements, like fire, water, and air, which, in the ancient world, interplay to create you know pretty much everything that we've got. Um, we as human beings have three core we have the body which would relate to the earth um we have the mind which would relate to, uh, 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 to, to the to the kind of as it were to the sky and then we have the soul the soul is the part which is eternal and we i believe we all have it i maybe psychopaths don't i don't know but but let's let's just i work with what i know which is i know that i have one and that i think is an analogy of god you know the mind and rationale and 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 the body and we are we are comprised of these three things so to get to you your question the way i envisage it is that we have the terrestrial plane um and i'm not just using that i would use that even if i was a globe a, a globe believer but you know yeah. i'm using it in in that in that sense we have the terrestrial plane um we have the intellectual plane and then we have the the spiritual plane i'm not talking about you know any particular practice or denomination i'm talking about that that thing you know as a child that never goes away that thing that's what i'm talking about and so the way i the way i envisage it is that we above this what we can see and let's call it a firmament because i don't know how it all fits together it's beyond me but i know that it's solid it's quite clearly solid i don't know what the dimensions are but above that is a world which is <clears throat> which you can seem to peep at through the holes of the stars at night, but you can never get a full picture. Mm. Um, it's, it's, and that's, that's God's realm. And the way I see it, uh, I would sort of switch from that to uh, almost like a computing analogy where God is like, we do the things that we do, but you know, there's an operating system through which we work and God is, you know, he created all of this, but, in our interactions with God, it looks as though we're the ones doing it, but actually there's an operating system there. It's designed, it's fully functioning, but it's it's 
going to crash one day. You know, it's mm. it's Windows ninety five. It's got an it's got it's got a it's been built to fail at a certain point. It, we've been built to fail at a certain point. It's been built to f to fail at a certain point. And at that point where it fails and where we are presented with reality in its totality, that's when we get to you know. We get, we, you know, we get the upgrade to the, you know, the, the best Macintosh. I'm, 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 I know it's sort of breaking down at this <laughs> point, but, but that's how I would see it. So I, I, I can't know. I can only sense, but I, that's the realm of God, and He operates through His creation, imminent, and yet, you know, available to be, to be, um, to be perceived, but not through. Uh, the way I describe it is, let, let's say, an, a, 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 a sort of an atheist will look at, you know, those those magic eye pictures. That, that if you shift yeah. your focus, okay. Uh, I find this is a really good way of describing the difference between atheists and, and believers in the sense that I'm using this word is that an atheist looks and he says, well, there's just, you know, there's, there's 14 million dots here. I've counted them all, you know, and but but that's all that's there. Well, I, I said, well, I agree with you. I, I see dots too. I, I do genuinely see dots. I'm not lying. I'm not pretending to see dots. I do see dots. And I, and I believe you when you tell me that you see dots. I agree with you. You see dots. But I also see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And I'm also not pretending to see it. I see it. And I'm sorry that you don't see it. And I accept that you don't see it. But your inability to see the Leaning Tower of Pisa has no bearing upon my ability to see it. You be true to no Leaning Tower of Pisa, I'm going to be true to Leaning Tower of Pisa. So mm. if these are things which are inferred. They're, 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 and I think that these are things that, going back to my sort of preoccupation with the Middle Ages, these are things that everybody understood. I talk, you know, If you talk like this today, people say, oh, you know, you've read a lot of books or whatever it is. Uh, an average friar with practically no education could probably talk on these you know, far better on the top so, subjects, you know, even that we're talking about right now, because everybody knew this stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't, as they say, rocket science. So mm. to answer your question, I think that if you want to see it in terms of layers, like an opera, there's a reason why we use the, the computing analogy is because you kind of go from the very low level of machine code, ones and zeros going through a processor, and then there are layers of abstraction upon that, but the whole mm. thing working and sort of is, is a unified block, but there are mm. gonna be bits that you don't see, you can only infer, that's how I understand it. If we're talking about levels and layers, mm. it's interesting. Like they have the same seven heavens in Buddhism, yep. and certain certain Buddhist temples, um, even here in Thailand, there's a popular one. They will sell like amulets and idols, uh, which if you buy them and then they they get increasingly expensive, they guarantee that in your afterlife you will get put into the third realm of heaven. And if you pay if you pay this much of a donation, you'll get into the seventh realm of heaven. You can see how these concepts can be so easily exploited oh. to people that aren't, um, you know, thinking thinking them through. It's like uh, indulgences, I, isn't it? Indulgences of the Catholic Church. Exists, and then they exist in most religions. It's like opportunists get yep. involved in every religion and then find these things and exploit them. But originally, I don't think. You know, the people that wrote about seven heavens um, meant the things that <laughs> are being said now. And I, I don't profess to know exactly what that could be, but it seems to be like a mental space that you can graduate towards. And, and it definitely relates, I think, to the seven chakras, this, this uh, symbology that has existed since long before these um, books came into place, which do have their psycho-spiritual centers, seven of them, you could call them firmaments even, um, and as you work through them, it's similar to like Maslow's pyramid of self-actualization. You have to start with having your basic needs met, and that's your, your, your base chakras and all this, and then eventually, if you do the internal work, you make your way up to, you know, third eye, having intuition, and the crown chakra being open to cosmic rays or whatever they want, however they want to talk about it in those kind of circles. But the idea is the same in which it is self-actualizing yourself through the process of first meeting your physical needs and then your emotional and mental, but all the way up spiritual. And, and so I wonder if it's more talking about this kind of a concept when they talk about seven heavens or seven firmaments rather than a physical structure and a physical, seven physical places each one a little bit better, and depending on how you were in this life, you'll you'll graduate to one of those heavens. Because a, a lot of times there's seven hells too in in these um, 
conceptions as in Buddhism as well as some esoteric Christian um, thought that they have seven hells like that as well. Uh, so the number is pretty interesting. But also I wanted to say, you talked about how those specific rules are for believers and not, you know, they're for specific people. Oh, prophet, oh, Adam, whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, but the Quran, as I read it, it, when they talk about belief and disbelief, believers and disbelievers, it feels to me like um, I must be a disbeliever then because I'm not, A, I don't believe in the sense we're talking about believe, or even B, if believe means emulate, and you're saying, so the believers must emulate these rules. So does that mean that if I don't emulate all the rules as they are laid out in the Quran, that I don't qualify as a believer? I does, that mean, I, I, does that I mean that I now get all of the negative things that they say okay. the disbelievers deserve? Okay, I, I just have to say, I, I don't accept emulate as, as a value except oh, okay. f for that term. Um, <clears throat> My argument, oh, it's not even an argument. I, I would say that the, the Quranic position is God guides or he doesn't guide. How that works, I don't know. And I'm not going to pretend to know. I don't know. Um, I just know that that is how it works. In the same way as I don't understand the, how the operating system works. I just know that that, that it does, let's say. So so that, that would be one part of it. Um, I think that there is quite a... Uh, a, a load into the translation. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, by the way, you can. can, can. Yeah, um, there's a quite the, the English translations are quite often loaded with this. They've got something to sell. All right. I mean, if they they have. They want to give you this religion, and you know the the stick and carrot method of getting you to it. And I'm not saying everybody in this religion is all terrible and bad. I, I, I don't believe that from I know it's not true because I've met some very decent people within it. But what I'm saying is, is that it is a it is a distinctly different narrative to what this book is talking about. And not only can I prove it, I have proven it and I've proven it ad nauseum. And my findings are there in one place for anybody to go through who chooses to take the time to do it. But it's work. To, to go through it. Um, I, I will say, though, that the Quran doesn't uh, necessarily comport with our, our modern 20, 21st century view of the world. Um, we have a very, we all do, we can't help it, we grew up in this time, we have a, an idea of the world which, and, and, and a, a complacency and a sort of almost arrogancy about our, ourselves. And it's something to do with this idea of progress because it's it is it is confirmed by you know iPhones and things like that. We tend to think that we're right about everything. Well, you know, are we? Um, you know, for six thousand years, men thought very differently to how we think today. And some of the things that that you know you or I or other people may find they don't like about the Quran or whatever. Well, there may be lots of things that people at that time wouldn't like about what we believe. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that it isn't from God. It doesn't mean it is from God. It's just a separate issue. It's uh, like you know the shape of the earth or whatever it is. So I what I what I what I don't do is go to the Quran with my 21st century expectations and say right you have to agree with this you have to agree with feminism you have to agree because it doesn't there's you could there's no way around it it is definitely not a feminist book it's 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 got a very clear view on on a whole load of subjects a lot of people today aren't going to like those okay you don't like them that's fine is it saying that you, you are damned to hell because you don't accept the quran that isn't i can't find that in that in that book I, I don't see that. It isn't, and it's harder for people like you and me to get this because we come from a Christian, Protestant, I'm assuming in your case as well, background, which is it's either or. It's my way or the highway. And we we transpose that onto any religious book. We tend to. That's the expectation, at least. Because, you know, if somebody somebody slaps you, you know, around the left, the left cheek, you, you go into another room, you expect another one on the left cheek. <laughs> it's natural. Um, but that isn't the Quranic argument. It, it really isn't. I mean, sure, we're talking about that the, there was a prophet who was sent to a particular place at a particular time with a particular mission, and he did that mission. And he says it's about this this book, talking to Muhammad, and whomsoever it may reach. Is it going to reach everybody? No. It actually, but it is going to reach some people at some time. Who, when, I don't know. 
And this actually argues, uh, answers something that the Christians could never answer for me, which is, what about this Jesus? If he's the one who saves you, then what about all the people who lived in times when Jesus wasn't alive? And, you know, what about all the hundreds of thousands of people living in you know, different continents and all the rest of it? And it all gets all very hocus pocus. The Quran doesn't have those, it doesn't paint itself into those sorts of corners, in my experience of it. It doesn't. I'm not here to, to push it on you, to say you have to believe it, you don't have to believe it. It is a book of guidance, but it's mainly a book of warning. And it's talking about very particular events. And what's happened is, in my view, is uh, that it's been, there is an ossification process which happens with any scripture. Any civilization kind of comes up around it. What you normally get typically is you have like a, a takeoff period and then there's a sort of slow decline. And, and that's where Islamic civilization is. There was, there was a great Islamic, Islam, Islamic civilization. Much of it actually was Persian. Uh, you know, it wasn't really so much to do with the Arabs. I mean, although Arabs did have a sort of, they did have a, 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 a they had mathematicians, they had doctors, and lots of what we get today has come from that. But but they ossified and they basically decayed.